Good evening and welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson. The human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. Check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And you can check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And of course, right now we have our amazing Kickstarter campaign for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim Live. This is our second book set in the world of Drakenheim, which has a host of new player options compatible with 5th edition. And feature. And the centerpiece of this is our brand new class that we have designed, the Apothecary. Uh, so we have new subclasses, new spells, new feats, and a whole bunch more lore on the wider world of Drakenheim. And to celebrate this, we have some very cool events coming up later on this week. Kelly, tell us about them. Uh, this Thursday, we are going to be doing a special live stream at our usual time on our Twitch channel, as always. Um, on so Thursday night. On Thursday, Thursday night, night, same usual Thursday time. night, <laughs> usual time slot. So same time. To, to be specific, Thursday night, that's in a couple days, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time on tw at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes, we are going to be joined by um, Ben from the Eldritch Lorecast and Dale from Monarch, is it Monarch Academy? Monarch Factory. Getting? Monarch's Factory. Darn, I knew yeah. I was going to get that wrong. Um, but we have had many chats with uh, Dale and Ben on the Eldritch Lorecast. We've had a, a lot of fun with them. And uh, they are excited about this book and really want to dive in and try out some of the new options. So we are going to be doing a full Apothecary <laughs> one-shot. <laughs> Myself, Dale, and Ben all playing Apothecaries all day. And we're gonna we're gonna do some investigating. Yes, there is a mysterious shipwreck marked with the emblems of the Amethyst Academy that is washed up on the Crystal Coast. Who knows what strange cargo this boat was transporting? And our three apothecaries are going to investigate it. Um, so check that out on. That's gonna Thursday. be fun. Yes. All I'm thinking is potions inspectors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right You've got the, the potion yeah. inspector trio. <laughs> yes, there's there's currently we we just sh showed one of our freebies. So if you're following the Kickstarter, we actually have some freebies that, that are excerpts from the book that you can download. This week we posted our new uh, sample of some of our new tool feats. And one of our feats is Potion Expert, uh, but people are already asking us if we could rename the feat Potion Inspector. <laughs> you can do it at your table. You know, yeah. everyone knows what you're should. talking about. <laughs> yeah. We should have. I don't know. That was, yeah. that was a silly oversight. So if you want to get in on the Kickstarter, head on over to drakenheim.com. Uh, that'll take you right to the Kickstarter page where you can check out everything that's on offer. Because in addition to the books, we're doing new miniatures. We're doing a mini of the Duchess. We're doing miniatures for the Apothecary player characters. We're doing more cards, and it's all new stuff. So if you back Dungeons of the Drakenheim, um, it, all the accessories are brand new stuff. If you didn't back the first book, they're not dependent on each other, so you don't need to have Dungeons of Drakenheim to use Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. It's compatible with any... The new classes and player options are compatible with any 5th edition setting, but it's got lots of great dark fantasy stuff, so check it all out. With that, though, we are going to dive back into the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces 
to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Veo, Paluto, and Wilhelm were in the midst of a Caspian duel in the ruins of Drakenheim. They have ventured deep into the, the ruined city in search of a ferocious monster to slay in their competition with Uriel Radley. This will, this, the results of this duel will decide several of the key tenets and terms of the negotiations with the Illyrians that Wilhelm and company are currently currently trying to arrange to prevent an all-out war between Westamar and Illyria. What the, the Knights of the Silver Order, led by Uriel Radley, have gone after in, in Drakenheim is unknown, but our heroes have managed to slay the monstrously mutated, massive, much bigger Linda. <laughs> <laughs> um, by drawing the regenerating monster out of the deep haze where they were able to finally slay it, preventing its wounds from healing. Having now beheaded the beast, you were able to wheel the head of the creature onto one of the wagons that you found. Um, and with the axe beak that you pulled out of your uh, bag of tricks, you have something that can actually haul the wagon. And still, the, the head of Big Linda causes the wagon's wheels to kind of buckle and there's a noticeable sag to the aged wagon which has been exposed to the elements uh for 15 years really so th this this journey with this wagon might be its very last and even as you're loading up the the wagon you can tell that if you pull this wagon across difficult ground it is almost certainly going to bust an axle and break. So um, if you want to continue using this wagon, um, you're going to have to take it through the clearest streets you can find, which could very much impact uh, what route you take through the city to get out with, with, this, with your prize. So sorry, y'all, no fast travel on this one. This getting this trophy back is a problem in itself. <laughs> uh, love a challenge. Uh, we'll also want to avoid areas of deep haze as we're traveling back. <laughs> That's a good call. The head may just turn <laughs> it into back? starts to grow the body back. Oh, yes, no. and then we'll have another bigger, angrier Linda on our hands. And I was uh, really hoping that you guys were going to pick up on that one. No! <laughs> Okay, we so, gotta be super careful. We need about... to, yeah, yeah. Take. Do I, do I know the route at this point? Am I mm. like, oh, the obvious big, <laughs> clear route? Okay. So thinking about that, um, uh, Veo, immediately you your brain starts thinking because you know many of the fastest ways across the city by taking the rooftops. Your experience leading this group is very much based on not having to haul a wagon around. Yep. So I'm going to have you give me a, um, um, either you can give me a survival check mm -hmm. or you can give me a history check. And if you give me a history check, I'll let you apply twice your proficiency modifier because Drakenheim is like your favorite ground. So take my proficiency bonus times two and add it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Because my proficiency is five, so that's plus ten. Okay. Yep. Well, that's an eleven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those so, ones out of the way. <laughs> so you're thinking here here is is what you you know. Um you know that going back towards the clock tower is going to be a bad idea because mm -hmm. as soon as you get to the clock tower, you, you know that Slaughterstone Square, Cathedral Square, and the entire South Ward are covered by deep haze. You know, also know that you'll want to avoid the Academy Tower as, yeah. as well. And 
one of the more clear ways be- the the way between the barracks and the academy tower the roads along market way you know why don't we look at the map of drakenheim as well yeah i was just pulling that up. um so we'll i'll just pull that up too for everybody so i should have uploaded the haze map as well i i actually have not uploaded that map so just give me a moment okay so here is kind of your read of the situation i'll just zoom this way out for us so we can actually see see the the city itself we are in queen we are out of queen you are garden just now. out of queen's park garden yeah okay out of the deep haze yep so i think that gives us a good look at where where we're at so what you know is that there is deep haze around slaughterstone square which is here and there is deep haze around the temple gate here and the you're just um your position right now would be approximately here okay and uh, also like deep haze is uh by number 10 here the academy tower the yeah. inscrutable tower so if we're if we're drawing a little bit there's going to be deep haze in that area there there's going to be deep haze around here there's going to be deep haze around here obviously around castle draken there's going to be deep haze around here and obviously once you get closer to the crater like the whole the whole setting. everything past the the river yeah yeah deep haze. right uh and we're um, on for five shepherd's gate uh, yeah, Shepherd's Gate or Market Gate. Um, those those would be two of the gates that you could take out. Um, obviously, the the actual barracks is here, right? So the the pathway that you're taking towards there is is mostly just a matter of the main roads and the main streets are pretty cluttered. So taking an actual direct path. Um, might not be possible. You might have to double back a little bit um, unless mm. you want to risk the cart itself. Yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Now we could clear rubble, but it's really the unawkward ground. Like it's like the divots in the ground and like yeah. chunks of like meteor that have like damaged yes. places. Pre- precisely. And clearing cle- clearing away will obviously just take more time. Right? Got it. Yeah. Well, I think the most obvious route is to get... We, we currently have... Uh, Hooded Lantern stationed at gate number five, uh, Shepherd's Gate. So that would be our safest exit from the city. Yeah. Um, and the closest one. So it's just a matter of avoiding hazards along the way there. If we can, yeah. We can also keep our eyes open for a new and improved cart system. Something yes. maybe that is uh, in a much better uh, There's certainly condition. a possibility that you could find something that is in better condition by heading towards the market. Yep. Um, because there would have been more stalls there. There would be things that might have been covered by awnings. So they might be in slightly better condition and thus able to withstand more difficult ground. Well, if we head south to Market Square, see if we can fetch a better ride, then head uh, west towards uh, Shepherd's Gate through and, the, and the through barracks. the streets th- and the mm-hmm. barracks. Yeah. Um, does that sound? It agreeable? sounds uh, plausible. I think that's going to give us the best route, and then we'll just have to be prepared to meet anything along the way. Um. So is there anything y'all need to prepare if we do get into a little scuffle? Um, well, how do you, what does everyone get back on a, maybe we, maybe we rest a moment. If, uh, is, is that, does that help? Or maybe a short rest? I know we can't do a long rest, but I mean, we can do a short rest in the haze. It helps I, you. I don't need that anything, matters. but if it helps you, then we can do it. I mean, I feel so tired. I feel so weak. I feel like I can't even maneuver in battle properly. Um, you worked really hard. But if I give you a rest, you know? if I were to sit down for approximately sixty minutes, uh, I might be, uh, <laughs> I might be refreshed enough. Very. I well. mean, uh, I could use a sixty minutes sit down as well. Um, tend to my multiple wounds from being slapped with a tail several times. <laughs> Do we have any uh, means of 
hiding or should we just find some shelter and mm. do our best to uh... uh unfortunately with the with the head stealth is basically impossible like, like the the issue with the head is is the smell coming off mm. of it now <laughs> i mean we are in drakenheim so it can't be rotting indeed in indeed it's not rotting but it is fresh meat uh oh oh pluto uh -oh. I have a question <laughs> yes please uh what is done with this head after it is presented as a trophy because this could be a really neat delicacy we might have a treat well once the um uh, once we've sort of uh finished the duel um you know uh, to each their own uh how they wish to divvy up their prize some wish to keep it as a monument or a trophy and rub it in the other's face um in the case of monster parts uh i think eating is a totally uh viable solution uh some Saying people the waste eyes and might throw it out. seem a delicacy so i don't want to waste it yeah. as long as it's not too contaminated uh, veo if if i may um how 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 often do you indulge in eating creatures found in the ruins of drakenheim i mean for many years it was literally all i was eating so if you uh, count that a lot essentially my whole <laughs> life you count what? your whole life lately what? i haven't had to but you know i have a bucket list what um, means do you use to purify the food? It must be contaminated. Surely, the, have you gotten sick? Are, any mutations or, or, or so contamination know, issues? Who knows how it's affected me long term in my growth and development. But uh, <laughs> I don't mean any know? offense by this, but were you at one point a human and this has the outcome of eating? Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't go that far. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. But I mean, I always, uh, you know, hand it to Chud and let him work his magic. I don't put it into the hands of the rest of the soldiers. It's my own special thing that I do. So, you know, if I could just a little bit a little spice up something and make mm. a stew, I wouldn't I mind. I think that's totally, I mean, honestly, Veo has like the iron stomach of iron stomachs, like uh, unparalleled in her... Uh... <laughs> I will refrain from eating the meat of this bigger Linda. You might be missing out on something. This could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, you know, I truly mean that. It might be the end of your lifetime, but it might be a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Yes, in my experience, some some things are best left undone. As you confer. I'm going to assume that this is the conversation you have as you're taking your rest. So if you'd like to expend your hit dice, recuperate your abilities, that is fine. However, I need you all to roll me a d6. My delirium dice. Six! Five. five. Okay. Five, five. As you take your rest, there is a ferocious, almost metallic screech that resounds around the city of Drakenheim. And as you take your rest, the mists part through the middle of the, the midday sun, which just finds the smallest bits of light through the, through the haze. As the wind carries the deep haze and, and the rain subsides slightly, you catch a vision up on the cliffs of Castle Draken. There, a ferocious battle is taking place between Uriel Radley, and as you do so, you see the massive form of Manazarand bite deeply into the wing of one of the griffins of the Silver Order. You just meet, meet out that small form, and you see the silhouette of one of the griffin riders crashing down towards the city ruins as the other two fly after them in oh, retreating from Castle Draken. At this distance, it's hard to tell which combatants were there, but whatever has happened, the mighty dragon Minazarond has fought off Uriel Radley. That is good news. Although uh, I uh, I do think that the 
Knights of the Silver Order in all of their planning to really do not understand the situation that they might be in. I, I, it's in my nature to do what is right in times of distress. It's literally one of my rules, rule number 14. And I hate to be the one to ask this question, but we saw the griffin get bitten, not the rider, and the griffin fell with the rider on its back, and the rest of the people are fleeing. Should we be going to their aid? Should we try to save that soldier that was downed in Castle Draken? The question is, does it put our own trophy in jeopardy? Mm. Or do we can can we rely on the witnesses? Well, this is where if they have become overrun, I, I, I do not wish to leave Petra in danger. Uh, who is it? Petra and Ansem that went with them. It was just Petra that went with them. Petra, the the you know, um, I think back to our own. <laughs> accident of uh leaving Ophelia Arena <laughs> but but like, sort of remembering um but uh you know if they if they have to retreat um and things become overwhelming you know we leave the witnesses to their demise which might win us the duel but it these are our friends we still win the duel if we have to jump in and rescue them from their attempt to kill. The I around that Pluto is. Does that mean we win more if we save them? <laughs> uh, what you do know is, you still have to bring the trophy back, right? So, if you, if your opponent is. You don't win the duel. You don't win a Caspian duel if your opponent is slain and you come back empty-handed. Um, and we gotta be... We're, we're out there killing rats, yeah. trying to panic mode. Uh, they're flying and we're not that far away from them. Is it possible... Do we still have a flare gun? Uh, you did not bring a flare gun with you unless you have it on your, in, on your equipment. Mm. We've used all the ones I think that we've been given. <laughs> <laughs> we usually use them as they uh, as we get them. Yeah. Veo. Perhaps we can get the attention of the aerial riders, and and they can get to us much faster than we can get to them. I have oil and a lantern. We could light an arrow and fire it into the air. A lit arrow would still be a sign, although my problem is that um, we're also going to be signaling anything that can see us from f around, and the streets are infested with rats, and we have a giant chunk of meat with us. So, again, I'm, I'm torn here because I want to help those who are in need. We do, but, I, but we need to help ourselves first. We need to make sure that we are the priority or else we all might be lost. You know, this is Drakenheim. It's not safe to go playing the hero when we need to make sure that our own forces are are fortified and, and taken care of. So as much as it is great, great thought. I'm wondering though, I think we need to get this back and then maybe we can head out instead of hunting for more monsters, we can go and see if they need any help. I, I think I am inclined to agree. How fast do you think by taking the normal streets can we make it to the barracks? It could be a place that we could store the head even temporarily mm -hmm. um, to head back into the uh, in, back into the city. Um, Elias I mean, Drexel speaks up and says... Yeah, he's here with us. <laughs> yeah, he says, I trust that if Petra is in danger that she knows the city well enough that she could make it back on her own. It doesn't... It's a fine hooded lantern. It doesn't... Of course, if she doesn't return tonight, I will want to f make sure that we 
we send patrols out for her. It might be best. I don't know what the best course of action is, but at the very least, we could send another unit out once we get back to the barracks. Or if we come across one on the way, that could be something as well. Mm -hmm. People should still be doing their patrols. The, um... Veil, you can give me a perception check. Uh, 27. Okay. Judging based on what you saw, you couldn't make out the individual riders. It's too far away. Wherever that griffin went down was almost certainly somewhere in the deep haze. Mm. So if you do want to go after them it either means leaving the head here or bringing it with you into the deep haze yeah we we either have to fight linda again or what she may become or get it back and 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 risk it being eaten or taken by the time we get back here and we also have our own people we have to protect too no, you're right, Veo, and it's it's why you're a good Lord Commander. I might be coming up on becoming king, but I will say that I have a tendency to want to save everybody, and it's at times impossible to do so. Um, I mean, rule number 78, always use your skills to protect the innocent. I see somebody go down the ruins of Drakenheim. I feel like it's my duty to save them, but there's too much riding on us getting what we have here back, and we need to be able to prioritize. Um, I will not leave whoever fell there behind. I will hope that their own people will go back for them. We will reconvene with Uriel Radley, but I think it's of utmost urgency that we get our trophy, at least to the gate where it can be protected by our people. Yeah, and also it's true that it does seem to be a giant beacon uh, for the infestation known as the Rattlings. I did not think about that aspect until... Wilhelm mentioned it, and now I'm a little bit more concerned because uh, we all know what rattlings can do. Uh, literally, rule number 83, which I've changed, a has changed a few times over the years, but right now I have it written down as never underestimate rats after some personal experiences. <laughs> uh, prior to that, it was ducks, don't ask, long story, uh, check out Untold Tales. Um, <laughs> And prior to that, my father had something else written there, but uh, it, it it's been changes scratched out so many times. It's it's, it's one uh, that that changes, yeah, a lot. It's hard to see. But currently, rats are the number one thing that has caused issues in my life, and I do not want any more rattling issues. Okay. Hmm. All right. So let's get this thing back, and then we can plan our next move. Okay. You pack things up, and you start making your way towards Market Square in search of perhaps a new cart to load up on. You're each going to roll me a d6, but stop, wait. I would like you each to pick up a d4 as well. <laughs> mm. At the same time, this is and a D four. Are we adding or are we? Uh, no, you can tell me the individual result of each. The D four represents the cart. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So I got a four on my D six and a three on my D four. I got a four on my D six and a one on my D four. Okay. I got a five on my D six. And a one on my D4. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that right. pothole doesn't look that big. Okay. <laughs> As you travel towards Market Square, okay. Um, how are, uh, um, 
you've got the axe beak, which has to be driven by one of you. Who is I'll driving? I'll be probably leading okay. it. Okay. Veo, where are you? If there are rooftop rooftops, I want to be scouting on the ahead rooftops? behind, kind of okay. like yeah. And Wilhelm, an where are you? I am sitting on top of the giant head of Big Linda <laughs> with my weapon ready, just watching okay. behind us. Okay. And where would you like the judges to be? Where Where are you traveling with uh, with Ophelia and um, Elias? I assume like flanking the cart. Okay. Either with each other, like on one side or the other, or either on both sides, like just, you know, maybe making okay. small talk, but staying close. In this case, Veo, you can give me a perception check. Wilhelm, you can also give me a perception check. But Paluto, you can make your perception check with disadvantage, please. 18. My favorite. Uh, 18 as well. Okay. I get a 14. All right. As you travel down the road, Veo, you smell the smell of rats. <laughs> and you see um, up ahead in the street, what looks like a clear street is in fact not a clear street. The cra the some of the gutters here, the sewer hatches are clearly broken off, and you can just see this the 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 signs of rat scratches around the sewer entrances leading in here. And through the ruined buildings and from the rooftops, you see that there are several ratlings on the rooftops with makeshift javelins with delirium tips. Okay. And there's no clear side roads that we can take. Um, at this point, you see that the, like, you have, they, they are, from what you can guess, um, these ratlings have noticed you probably for a while and have been taking up position to go after the big meal that you're hauling. And how far away are they? Um, let's, uh, let's set it up. Uh oh. You know, Pluto, rule number 26, expect everything's a trap and you'll stay alive. I say completely unaware of what Veo is seeing and looking behind us. Yeah, you're looking at the ground, the mud that the, the tracks are making. You're intrigued by that. So far, Pluto, though, no signs of a trap, but be on your guard. What are you I talking just, about? I Sorry. whistled down to you guys. I can't whistle. <laughs> Did I hear an attempt at a whistle? Pork yeah, tops. I think Veo's trying Pork to whistle. Tops. Pork chops. <laughs> oh, I know that one. <laughs> is she I... saying port shots? No, you know what this is. This is the be on guard. I, I pull out my sword and assume <laughs> a dueling position. Okay. On guard. So here is our street. All right. Um, and... So I will just adjust our little map here so that we can actually see where we're at. Whoop. This is a very large map. Very good. Okay, so here's our street here. All right. Um, and so you guys can position yourselves accordingly. Uh, you guys can be with, wherever you want within 30 feet of the cart. And I will just grab our other friends here for us as well so we have them all oh so i meant i was at the front more more than likely um, yeah and i'm probably hopping off the back if we're stopping the cart Then we'll put Elias and Ophelia here. And I just need a whole lot of rats. 
Sounds China like berries to me. Dang. So the idea that oh. we can, we're within 30 feet, we get like, Veo was able to see it, so we're getting a moment to kind of prep. Yeah. Is that the idea? Yep. Give you, like, it's kind of like the last moment of warning before, uh, before it all goes down. Okay, I could, if I'm at the front of the cart, I could. Hmm. Is that rattling running at us right in front of the cart? Question, are we going to collect these bodies? <laughs> Add them to the, the cart. Pile. Get a new cart. Okay. Is it possible, Monty, that I could make it onto this rooftop? Um, in this immediate moment, no. Um, but on your first turn in combat, yes. Okay, I'm gonna get to the base of the building. Then. Okay. And which ones have the bal balissas? Are they all? Balisas? All the ones on the roof have delirium tipped javelins. Javelins, sorry. Yeah. That's not a javelin. Okay, let's roll for initiative. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ooh. 25. Okay, Veo? <laughs> 24. Pluto? 6. <laughs> I, I had a cocked 16 and I rerolled it to a 1. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pluto's still, he saw something interesting in the marketplace. I mean, you were driving, right? Like, yeah, I was. I was like, I'm, I'm busy. I was talking to Billy Talon, the uh, axe beak. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Don't name it, Pluto. Now, okay. if it dies, you'll be upset. Thank you, Kyle. So, Veo and Wilhelm, fortunately, you two have seen the ambush before it goes down, so that no one is surprised. Um, so, with, with this. Um, uh, you see the ratlings poised to take their next meal. Several of them perch on the rooftops, and you can see that uh, there are se uh, that along the edges of the street, um, there are a few open sewer holes as well where ratlings could burst forth from, and several more on on the rooftops of the mostly intact buildings down this this part of the street. The area between market, uh, the Queen's Park Garden and the market itself is amongst one of the more intact areas of the city in terms of the quality of the buildings. So uh, many of the buildings along here are very tightly packed townhomes and merchants' homes that cater to the upper middle class of the city because that, that real estate, oh man, real estate between Market Square and the Queen's Park Garden? Oh yeah, this is, this is, this is, oh man, man, Toronto housing market, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> This is like the annex, you know, in terms of like this the, is uh yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, is nice. Yeah, this is yeah. nice. I mean, at the same a... time you're talking to Veo who lived in the castle, Wilhelm who lived in his own castle and Pluto the Caspian prince. So these houses are trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait a minute, you not have room for my servant. Veo, what are you going to do? Mean, do? Uh, I lived in a barn for a while, so. Um, most of your life. <laughs> True. I am going to start shooting, but I want to shoot not at the ones in front of me, but just the ones like across. Ooh, okay. The ones that here. are down over here. And I yell to the rest of them. I'm like, get the ones that are closer. I've got the far ones. And I start taking shots uh, at them. Um, and yeah, so I'll start get my uh dread ambusher which gives me an extra shot on my first turn so i'm gonna take three shots uh, nice. starting at this big boy right over here Oops, okay sorry. uh oh so um 25 to hit uh, yes, yes. Your arrow whistles across the street towards the rattling, uh, soundly embedding it in its flesh. Nice. Ooh, uh, 26 damage. And w landing straight between its eyes, sending it collapsing to the ground. 
Nice. Second go. Um, here we go. Um, 19 to hit. Also a hit. And I think I get an extra D8 on that one. So 18, 24, oh, yeah. 27 damage. Take it out. <laughs> and then the <laughs> third shot. On part to do like 75 damage in first turn. Like <laughs> Average. Uh, 13 hit. A miss, I'm afraid. Ooh, a very okay. shocked rattling as the arrow just whizzes past its whiskers. <laughs> and, oh, hold on. Let me recenter this map for a second. Um, from this corner, I guess, to here. Uh, could you ping again? Oh, uh, from these two spots. Is that like a jumpable dis dis yeah, distance? I actually didn't see your ping there. Oh, try again. There. Oh, it's way down south. Down. Oh, down. oh, where, 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 where? Ping again. Um, oh, oh, you want to jump across there? So that would be about a 30 foot gap. Uh, um, and I'm going to say that this building, so right here, um, where you're at right now, Veo, yep. this, this building is taller than this building, right? Because you can see from the map, you're on the tallest point here, and then okay. it comes over this patio and then down onto this rooftop patio here. Mm -hmm. So actually this rooftop and this rooftop are on the same level. So if you're jumping down here, you actually would be jumping up. up? Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 for someone like yourself, I not impossible, but certainly challenging. I'm gonna say that the the building that you're on, uh, the rooftop is about forty feet up. Okay. Yeah. Um. Then I will. Um. I guess for now I'll just stay where I am. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Nice, nice shooting. Wilhelm. Um, Wilhelm kind of, he pulls out his crossbow and he kind of uses the back of the cart to steady his aim. And um, he aims, I'm going to aim, as I see Pluto just jump off the cart and start running towards one of the houses, probably yelling something. Um, yeah. yeah, like that. Um, I see the rattling getting ready with a javelin to throw it directly down at Pluto. So I'm going to aim at this rattling right here. And um, I'm going to use steady aim. And... Uh, I mumble to myself, rule number 57, if you are to strike, be sure to strike true. And I, I use the back of the cart and let a uh, bolt fly with advantage. Nice. Getting, uh, I should know this, what's my bonus? Right, uh, uh, 28 to hit. It hits the rattling for sure. <laughs> uh, so I get, I get sneak attack on that. <laughs> Oh, that is a very dead rat. <laughs> Surprise. This one here, correct? Yeah. Should I even roll it? Roll uh, it. Yeah, roll it. Roll it. Count it. Can you beat 26? I think you that was what? the... That was a really sad roll. That was a really sad roll. Uh, I hope I kill it. I got an 18. Uh, that actually does not kill that one. <laughs> oh, no. Finish it. Finish it. <laughs> That was my that was my whole action. I'm gonna count those again. Hold on. <laughs> you shouldn't have rolled it. Who told you to roll it? <laughs> yeah, that's an eighteen. Um, you always gotta roll it. You never that, know. That does leave the the this rattling bloodied, but uh, but uh, unfortunately oh, he's, alive. Yeah, he's he takes the the shot and he's still about to throw the javelin. <laughs> I rolled I rolled three ones. And a two, like, uh, yeah, there was a six in there, but yeah, three ones out of that uh, sneak attack roll was, was not. That's rough. Good. Uh, that was my bonus action to steady aim, and that was my action to shoot. 
and I duck behind the cart and go, I've, I've lost my touch. Dracula Aren't you on top of the head? head? Aren't you on top of the I head? hopped off behind oh, okay. it. Okay. Okay. I'm using it as a shield, as a meat shield, literally. <laughs> the ratlings. Oh. This very brave ratling is going to climb down and dash up to the axe beak, uh, <gasps> no. turning on the pack tactics for all the other ratlings. Not Billy, Billy Talon. Talon. Uh, <laughs> and this one will run up to Pluto. No! Ve- two very no. brave ratlings. Not Pluto. Uh, and then these two ratlings over here um, grin at Veo and grinning and uh, doing their kind of chittering cackle. <laughs> they take their javelins and they throw them at the axe beak. <laughs> no! Getting a critical hit. <laughs> No. Uh, uh, and no. another another hit. Why did I name it? <laughs> What's relevant what here I? is: Does the axe beak gain any contamination levels? We're gonna have a mutated axe beak. Oh, okay. No. So, the axe beak has nineteen hit points and a D- AC of eleven. <laughs> so I've hit the axe beak twice. <laughs> The, the first javelin attack uh, did 13 damage to it from the crit. The second ja- javelin attack did 8 damage to it. And it's failed both at saving throws against contamination. So, so it, it died. So it dies with two levels of contamination. But the thing is, when you die with levels of contamination, we roll a d6 to determine if it turns into a monster. <laughs> Shall I roll or would you like to volunteer? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I what yeah you roll it man oh no uh, it's a five it's a five <laughs> it does... <laughs> so billy talon is dead but billy talon does not transform into a oh. monster oh, oh man i was gonna oh, turn no it... i was gonna I, cool. I, I was really gonna transform it into something bad. but oh well <laughs> <laughs> why did you name it pluto i'm sad now yeah you know, it's you should way harder to name Um, and then, uh, the, these two ratlings are going to come to the edge here and they're all going to throw, uh, delirium tip javelins at Pluto. Um, uh, getting a 21, a 21 it's, it's. and a crit. <laughs> so thankfully the crit is not a crit, but it also hits. Okay. So three hits. So the three hits are going to be. Um, so it's going to be first, um, the regular damage is going to be just, um, three, uh, total of 15 piercing damage, but then each one also does necrotic damage. So it's going to be 15 piercing damage plus another 15 necrotic damage. And I need three constitution saving throws against contamination. Oh, oh <laughs> these guys, these little, are we still expurgoed or no? It's a worn off. Okay. First is a 22. Okay. I get a pretty good con. So, uh, <laughs> as I roll a one. No. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, man. I'm going to, I can, uh, I can expurgo that, right? How many, how many strikes of aqua expurgo do you have? I've used all of my, when, <laughs> what, remember the wishes we got or like the special things we got from, um, uh, I used all those, but I haven't used any expurgo. So that's my first expurgo. Okay. And uh, chat can call me out on it if that's not true. Please let me know. But okay. I'm confident that's going to be my so first expurgo. So you're going to expurgo I one? Only I've used one. Okay. I think. And the last and one? My third one, oof, 23. Okay. 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 So you use one of your aqua expurgo uh, yep. uh, uh, charges. Okay. Uh, and then I got a couple other rattlings here. Uh, like I classic. think I think these two ratlings they're gonna throw their javelins at Ophelia Reed. Oh, uh, ah! and fortunately both of them miss. Oh, good. Uh, I, who threw them? Who What's threw the, the, the? These two these, up here. These two Climb on the, the cart. These two on the patio. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with that, we go to uh, Ophelia and Elias. Uh, from here on out, Ophelia Reed and Elias Drexel um, are going to take the dodge action. 
um, and get behind into cover. <laughs> so at least attacks against them will have disadvantage. Um, but they, but as judges, they're your responsibility to protect. They're not supposed to fight back. Yep. 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 We will murder all the ratlings. Paluto, it is your turn. I um, unsheath Ignatius and begin the assault. Um, starting with uh, this uh, rattling that ran up to me. Um, I get a 25 to hit. Okay. And I'm going to murder it. Uh, uh, yes, you you probably are going to uh, explode this rattling. Now I get, so it's uh, 19 damage. Yep, that kills it very soundly. Perfect, because um, I haven't activated Ignatius yet because I'm going to use my bonus action to quick toss the Javelin of Lightning Woo! Um, at one of these ones, the, the, the one on the right. Okay. Um, I get a 26. Um, I'm uh, gonna, I, even though I, are you the ones across the street or the ones above you? The ones across the street. Okay, yeah. So the, yeah, cause the ones across the street, I would be giving them serious cover. But uh, no, you got a clear shot to those ones. Those ones? Okay. So 26 for uh, uh, or sorry, 23 or ooh, only uh, 13 damage. That's enough to slay those ones. Okay. And then I'm going to try to climb up how tall is this building beside me? If I use the market parts and the 40, rooftop. 40 feet. So it would be a rough climb. Yeah. Oh, um, then I'm going to head back this way. Taking my, so the quick toss is a sec, is a extra attack. So the, um, 27 to hit this one. Okay. Or, um, only that was rough. Eleven damage. You splatter its guts all over the place. Oh, thank goodness! Yeah. And then, um, I still have my javelin, so I'm gonna because it came back to me. I'm gonna use my final attack to throw the javelin back at this other offending. Okay. Okay. Creature, um, getting a. 16 to hit with the cover that's going to be a miss it actually ricochets off the banister so it it, it and then it comes yeah. back okay uh and that and uh i look down at billy talent <laughs> <You're laughs> <monsters. laughs> all right all. top of the round um each of you can roll me a d6 <clears throat> two or Six. Two plus four plus six is twelve, right? Oh, I shouldn't have relied. I know. <laughs> the one time we don't. Monty always throws me off with his. Uh, <laughs> you're like, yes, hi. Oh, darn it. No, low. Oh, darn it. How many rattlings have each of you killed? Not enough. Not enough mm -hmm. to keep up with the number I just rolled. <laughs> Because I've killed zero. I'm I've killed a net, half of one. I'm a negative three net rattling loss. Bursting up from the nearby gutters. Oh, no. Oh, no. Boom. <laughs> no. A bunch of rattlings uh, come uh, swarming up uh, from the from the gutters uh, to uh, swarm around Paluto and the wagon. This will um, be there to represent them moving on to the battlefield. I suddenly oh. miss being Sebastian Crow in this moment. <laughs> I know. I was like, we have no <laughs> battlefield control at all. In addition, <laughs> another rattling with javelins appears up here. Oh, no. <laughs> and another rattling with javelins shows up uh, over on this far rooftop over here. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, like no, no um, necklace of fireballs, no, um, 
With that, we go to Veo. Uh, so that's just the rattlings. That's just it, the, the start of the round. So the rattlings still uh, um, will have their their actions to act, to to act from here, but that will count as their movement for the round. The ones that just. Uh, uh, quick question: What time of day is it? Um, it is uh, approximately three p.m. Right. Okay. Time of death: three p.m. I am going to shoot again for the furthest ones. As I'm doing so, I'm like, are we running away? Are we doing this? We don't have anything to carry the head with. Oh, I can no. carry it. Uh, 15 to hit. Uh, that is a hit uh, against this one that's far away here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's a hit. Uh, that is 19 damage. That actually does not kill it. Let me roll this again. <laughs> I aim at it again. Um, that is a 14 to hit. Okay, that will hit, yes. Oh, 19 more damage. And it is slain. Just as it runs up from the, as it runs up across the rooftop with its javelin ready to throw it, uh, you, two quick shots, shoot it down. Uh, and... I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I can do. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay where I am. Keep shooting these guys. Alrighty, Wilhelm, it is your turn. Uh, I pull out my rapier and yell, "On guard, foul rat, vermin!" Yep, that's what I say. And um, I lunge forward towards towards the first rattling. Okay. And. Uh, Attempt to graciously fight it. Uh, getting an 11. That misses. Uh, <laughs> yep. I'm, as the I'm, rat I'm sorry. <laughs> as, as the rattling dodges out of the way of my lunge attack, I say, ah, screw this, and I pull out my crossbow, hopefully this works, and shoot it in the face. Uh, getting a crit. There we are. Oh, uh, well, that blows its brains away. Yeah. Nice job. Nice so job. I, like, run at it with my sword, and as I'm like, ha, ha, it, like, keeps dodging out of the way, and finally I pull out my crossbow, just <laughs> point blank, shoot it in the face. And, um... Indiana Jones style? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I look over at Pluto, and I'm like, I got one! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Do it again, and again, and again, and again. I'm trying. It takes me about 6 to 12 seconds to kill one. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm going to protect any... these two as best I can. Okay. That's a good idea. The Ratlings. So those are their mm. current positions, but I still have a few that can move a little bit. This Ratling here is going to bravely jump down um, and clamber down and dash all the way down. Uh, and this rattling will bravely, um, seeing its allies being shot, he's going to d clamber up. Can I count that? Yeah, he can dash the all the way to you, Veo. Um, at the point of the ones with the javelins. These two on the rooftops turn their javelins towards you, Veo. And getting their pack tactics, they throw javelins. One gets a critical hit. Woo! The other gets a 15 to hit. No. So the critical hit is going to be 10 points of piercing damage plus 10 points of necrotic damage. And I need a saving throw versus contamination. Okay. What, a uh, con save? Yep. 12. So. That uh, is one level of contamination. Can I use my second thing on my All right. Aquarix Virgo? More Aquarix Virgo. Yeah. Okay. Well. Darn, darn javelins. They're little like, pins that just get thrown at you. <laughs> it's so amazing how you can just use a bunch of challenge rating one quarter character monsters and still challenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's the swarm. The swarm. Uh, this is not a party for swarms. Um, okay. Yeah, we're not a swarm party. Um, oh, no, we uh, the rattling on the rooftop over here is going to Javelin Ophelia Reed, getting advantage. 
Oh my god. Uh, and uh, hits Ophelia Reed. Nice. Uh, she takes 10 points of damage. And fails her saving throw against contamination. No! <gasps> Wait, she can cure her own contamination, though. <laughs> I hope uh, so. And Probably. then the two ones on the other rooftop are going to throw their delirium tip, tip javelins at Pluto. Um, that one is going to miss by a lot. That one's going to be a hit, though. That's going to be 22. Oh, yep. That so is. that's going to be another uh, 14 points of damage. Seven uh, piercing, seven necrotic, and saving throw against contamination. <gasps> uh, I get an 18. Is that enough? That's more than enough. Okay. Okay. Ow. Okay. I got to take that. You said 14? Yep. Ow. I'm updating my health on my uh, roll 20 tracker so everyone can see how much, <laughs> how many, how many javelins I have sticking in me. And it's a this, javelin this, counter. This rattling will run up as well. And then uh, I got a couple rattlings that are right up to you, Paluto. So they're going to pack tactics you. Uh -oh. uh, I get a 20. That hits. Um, so I get two hits through. Wow. Uh, little basic ratlings do 10 points of damage to Pluto. And then these remaining ratlings that are that are around. Um, this ratling here is going to attack the axle of the cart. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> and the only it's, cart we it starts gnawing off the wheel. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, they're little <laughs> buggers. All right. With that, uh, Ophelia and uh, Elias are going to uh, um, uh, Elias Drexel. Um, in the interest of self-defense, Elias Drexel will attack the ratling that is be beside Ophelia and him. Um, that is permissible under the the rules, and he does hit that ratling and disembowels it. Uh, Ophelia her herself. Uh, will um, uh, she begins tending to her own wounds um, and, and and seeing to herself. Um, so, Pluto, it is your turn. Um, the anger fueling me, uh, Ignatius ignites as I as I as its name um, echoes through the streets, and I begin my assault on the uh, poor rattlings. Um, uh, I get a <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the I miss the 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 basic. You miss the basic the basic rattling. <laughs> you miss with a plus thirteen to hit <laughs> with a plus magic magical holy sword uh, holy sword. <laughs> the rattling r dodging roll out of the way. <laughs> and. As he finds his footing, I just, I cleave him in twain with a 24 to hit. Yeah. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> I'm so, so frustrated. Which one were you targeting? The one right in front of me. Okay. The one like right, I get uh, 31 damage. <laughs> just, I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I take out all my frustration on this one rat like. Ignatius one. I, I it hits my foot. <laughs> Son of a. And then um, I uh, continue my assault, uh, going to the rattling just to my left, um, getting a, a sixteen to hit. Indeed, it does hit. For um, nine, thirteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-nine <laughs> damage. <laughs> Uh, so that you kill the rattling six times over, <laughs> and then I action surge and continue my assault, um, attacking the one just uh, just to my uh, northeast, uh, according to the map, uh, getting another sixteen to hit for nineteen damage. Yep. Um, the one that's also based with me. Uh, I get a a one. <laughs> no! I think that's the only way for you to miss them. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, I've been rolling a lot of threes, and I'm like, well, oh, this is working, but <laughs> those ones, they really yeah. get you. Yeah. 
Um, this is just to show you, uh, Chad, how how great ones can be <laughs> in combat. Embrace the one. Um, and then I get a 29 to uh, get my vengeance. <laughs> so just imagine, like, these ratlings swarming you, and two of them actually manage to dodge out of the way, but then you overcorrect <laughs> and, like, brutally slay them. So you did and, manage to take out four. Um, it only cost 30 damage you, it only, on that one. Yeah, yeah. 30 damage to the five hit point rattling. <laughs> and then I'm going to get right up in these ones' uh, grills um, to uh, perv- to try to stop them. Okay. Top of the round with Veo. All right, I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage from this rat. Move over here and shoot it in the face. Yeah. Let's take... Um, ooh. 13? Uh, 13 to hit? Yeah. That's a miss. <laughs> yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> oh, we're man. uh, we're oh, maybe boy. getting a little, uh... <laughs> we're tired. We're tired. 14? That's I'm a hit. tired, boss. <laughs> That's a hit. There you go. You got him. Oh my God. Just yeah, narrowly so... missed. Nice jail for all of you. Um, yeah, I okay. know. These are my, my new delirium dice. I've already got two ones oh my on God. in like okay, seven well. rolls. 19 damage. The rally has five hit points. That's <laughs> you can... My bonus enough to kill it. Wait, the one some online. of the rattlings have more than five. Yes, yeah, some of them some do. Of them do. Okay. Yeah, some of All them right. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. I love yeah. dice. I I'm love like dice. One. <laughs> Wilhelm, we're over to you, buddy. It's a tired day. We were we've been tra- we chase a dinosaur through the haze for like an yeah. hour. Uh Wilhelm sweat pouring off of him. His hair's a mess. He runs forward towards this rattling. Uh he's trying. He's trying. Uh oh my god. Uh, I get a 12. The rattlings are, are laughing. Not with us the, tonight. the rattlings are <laughs> laughing at you. I run forward and I like throw my rapier out, but it's easy to dodge. Again, I'm like, uh, the sword's not doing it. I pull out my crossbow. Oh, come on, these <laughs> dice. I get a 14. That does hit. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it just gets past the rattling shield. Uh. <laughs> What's the... Okay, it does... Hold on, I just need... Um... Man. I want to double check my ability here. Does it work with ranged attacks? Um... What is it? Fancy (laughs) footwork? What are you looking for? Uh, You're going to kill this rattling anyways. Unless you do less than five damage with this hit. Okay, true. I I do more than five damage with that hit. Yeah, because I can't do. I think your bonus is plus five. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I murder it, and again, I'm like Pluto. That's two. <laughs> Veo, how are you doing up there? Have you killed more than two? Four. I think about four. Oh. Count them when they're dead. And I'm just swinging and missing rattlings, and I'm so frustrated. Uh, Six attacks, two of them my- once. Is anybody else having a hard time hitting these rattlings? So wily. All right. They're shifty. They're so fast. I t- okay. That's my turn. The I'm rattlings. Slippery like butter. I'm sweaty. Pluto, as you run up to this rattling, it finishes cutting through the wheel. No! And the wheel breaks and snaps, sending the head of Big Linda. Do you remember that scene from Hook where the crocodile falls down on Dustin Hoffman? Wait, me? Is this me? <laughs> Wait, which, I guess, yeah, would go towards... Is yeah. Pluto Jackson Captain Hook? In this scenario, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, this is my uh, my trophy, my prize, is now going to eat me from beyond the grave. Great. Great. Uh, uh, so, Rattling so, the Lost Boys? You just got hooked. <laughs> so, Pluto, you can, make a de- you can give me a dexterity saving throw. Can I... Can I... <laughs> I'm going to reach on this because... What a what a miraculous thing that's happening to me! Um, can I attempt to use Shield Master? Um, if um, um, a Dex saving throw to uh, against effects that only target you, I can add my AC bonus to my Dex save. Sure. 
Sure, you're, you you're, you get a plus two from your shield. Yeah, sure. So I can roll a plus three instead of a plus yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this dice is only giving me a few ones tonight, but I think I can really pull it off. Uh, 19. Hey. Okay. So you only take half damage as you sail out of the way uh, of, of the teeth. Um, and the other two ratlings are crushed under the head of Big Lin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then then can I also ask, can I use my evasion? No, that's, the evasion's technically for, uh, like, fire breathing and, and, effects yeah, and stuff, yeah. right? Okay, okay. So I'll take half damage? Yeah. So it's going to be, uh, so half damage. I'm basically just going to count this as Big Linda's bite attack. So you take 20 <sighs> points. In the process, that, that the hurts. other two rattlings on the rooftop are going to throw javelins at you. Um, <clears throat> this is not good. Okay. It miss really horribly. And I'm going to say that one of the delirium tip javelins hits Big Linda's head. I don't oh, like it. No. I don't like it. I don't I don't love that. I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> what a chaos. What a scene. Um this rattling is going to run up and try to stab you, Pluto. Uh it misses. I accept. These rattlings are going to run up to Wilhelm. Yeah. Uh, and so all the rattling javelineers are all going to target Wilhelm because they're the only yeah. one they can get pack tactics on. Uh, so I get an 11. Miss. I get an 11. Wow. I, I get an I 18. I get an 18. Miss. An 18 misses. My, my new armor. Oh! The 19 now. The, the, see, the, di 20. The, the dice oh, can turn 20. around. The dice can turn around. I am twirling towards success. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is starting to turn against the rattlings. <laughs> I flounce out of the way of those attacks. Nice job, Rob. Alrighty. Um, Nimble feet, with, yeah. With that, uh, the, the um, we go to Paluto. Um, I begin my my vengeance against this rattling, <laughs> uh, getting a twenty-five to hit, just cutting it down with Ignatius, and oh. then. Reaching behind me, I uh, remove a my javelin to quick toss at the the non bloodied one, um, getting a t eighteen to hit. It is a hit. Or seventeen damage. All right, that leaves it bloodied. And then as the javelin comes back. Uh, I'm going to throw it uh, two more times. Ooh. Um, I'm going to throw it once at the the one I just struck mm -hmm. for a 18 to hit as well. Nice. But that one's only going to do uh, 10 damage. That is enough to slay. And then the other one, I get a... It's going to be a... This is where I'm going to use the lucky. Because I think I need to hit this thing. Uh, uh, 15 to hit. It is going to be slain. Okay, for, yeah, for uh, nine more damage. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, that turned against the Rattlings very, very quickly. Uh, Veo, do you want to finish this off? <laughs> we'll attempt. I can attempt. <laughs> uh, I'm going to fire against, actually, the guy over here. Okay. Uh, 15 to hit. Bring it on home. 19 damage. Okay. Yeah. That's going to leave him bloodied. But these guys, with with their numbers cut back, you can see that all these rattlings are looking to cut and run. So if you're going to shoot him down. I got a, I got a one on the die. Oh, so. okay. Um. Wilhelm? Count him. <clears throat> um... I'm going. I I'm parrying out of the way, and I retaliate with a uh, with a, a stab from my sword, getting getting a twenty five finally. Oh, cut down. Nice. And then I shoot the other one next to me with my crossbow, uh, getting a twenty one. Nice shot. With that, with all the rattlings on the ground slain, the other javelineers cut and run, uh, making an absolute run for it. Um, so many of them cut down. There is just no way that they, these guys are going to stay and fight anymore. And so the rattlings flee. 
the with the chitter with the bulk of them now dead in the in the street um the delirium shard from one of the missed javelins embedded in big linda is uh a a, a little bit discerning uh concerning what are you guys going to do about that uh, i say we remove the javelin yeah get it out okay you pull out the uh who goes to pull it out i am going to I quickly turn around and grab it. As you place your hand on the javelin, Big Linda's eye opens for a moment, makes direct eye contact with you. You pull the javelin out, and then the eye just stops. <laughs> you bit me from beyond the grave already. <laughs> just. Oh. This cart. I'm going to take a look at this wheel. Give it a quick, uh, the old ones over. Um, uh, does, is it fixable, Pluto? If you had, if you had tools! Have uh, these tools? <laughs> Pluto, don't, do you have, like, mason's tools or something? I do, I'm quite the mason. I begin to craft a wheel out of stone like you, you, our forefathers you'd need wayne's right tools but maybe with these tools you could jury rig something that might hold up what about mason's tools Did mason's I... tools are used for stone cutting mm -hmm. can i check uh, on the street and see if there's an extra cart with a wheel and or a better cart wait sure. a second <clears throat> there's also these circular tables right up here that are about the size of a wheel mm. Look at, look at that for the, 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 the damage the damage that the rattling caused was actually Oh, there's a cart. The the damage that the rattling caused was actually not the wheel itself, it was the axle. Yeah. Um uh and so the um so there's actually a stability issue with, with the vehicle. If you do want to search around and see if you're getting closer to the market square, so if one of you does want to go off and search, you might be able to find something. I All can right. just go. All right. Yeah, do you have any magic that can repair things? No. Any cool magic. Just cleaning magic. Um, the only thing I have that could, because the axle is the the piece that goes across them, right? Yeah, yeah. I do have an immovable rod, so I don't know if that helps with anything up. Just don't all. click it. But that would be it. Veo, you have magical capabilities. Yeah, a little bit. I picked up a few things here and there. Learned some things from Sebastian. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Them. I'm gonna say that with your thieves' tools and the immovable rod, because the advantage that the immovable rod has is that it's still a magic item, which means that it's extremely durable. So, if you want to try to jury rig something with your thieves' tools and the immovable rod, you can try that, or you could try looking for another wagon. Maybe we do that until we get to the market square, and then we can try to look at. Um... Yes. That's bombing it to a new wagon. Veil, perhaps you could just summon another Axel. I'm not that magical. <laughs> that's, mm. that's, that, I don't think that that's takes a some spell. Skill. I, we've been with Sebastian. Sebastian's never had the ability to summon like any kind of like wooden object. No. I just thought that would be a, the uh, anyway. I've been over this with my own <laughs> friends. Uh, yeah. Apparently, it's much harder. You you can summon fire out of nothing, but you yeah, can't summon a wooden weird. stick. You can summon, you can just do a <laughs> stick. You're right. I should ask him about that. There's got to be a spell for that. It seems like the first thing that you would be able to do with it magic. Was, it seems probably so trivial too. They they laugh at you. Like, laugh, like oh, they yeah, open so portals to other dimensions, no, but they can't. they. Can Obviously, they can't summon sticks. That's why they carry wands and staffs because that, they need okay. the sticks. <laughs> they Thank try. you, omnipotent. Because if you could <laughs> summon the stick that you have to carry, you—it's kind of like this, this like circular, like yeah, you can't. Well, what if they need supplies? Like the, as you guys are saying this, I'm like trying to. <laughs> All right, Veil, give me a check like, with your thieves' tools. Wilhelm uh, and Pluto have a deep discussion about the th theoretical ideas of magic without knowing what they're talking about at so, all. So, plus my proficiency? Yep. Uh, ten. Okay. It ain't pretty. No. You basically you basically <laughs> slot the immovable rod in there and just kind of take a little bit of string and hope that it holds. It's probably not, but it might get you as far as the market square. Can we make sure to have the button on the inside where it can't be pressed easily? Okay. <laughs> it kind yes. of rips the whole cart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not good. 
Um, you're able to get the head of Big Linda back onto the cart and uh, after it spills out and start making your way towards the market square. And that's where do we'll we take have our to, break. Do we have to summon another axe beak? Uh, no, I, I'm carrying it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Pluto's going to yeah. have to pull it now. Yeah. It's going to be much got... slower, unfortunately. Um, mm. But, uh, <sighs> but yeah. Yeah, because you, you know, used... Do you have anything else you can summon from your bag? He used all this. That was the deal. We blew, we blew the... Yeah. Yeah. We I can the charges. help. I mean, I'm weak, so I'm not really helping. You're just... actually not helping. You're actually making it way harder. So just you go wait over there <laughs> and don't stand on it anymore at all. <laughs> all don't rely on me to pull anything. <laughs> we will Where's see you Rudy? all in just a few minutes. <laughs> and we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on our consumables and we are going to play some more D&D. So the Immovable rod heaves as it bears the weight of Big Linda's severed head in the wagon as Pluto pulls it forward. Pluto, with every pull, you can hear the wagon creaking and buckling as if the immovable rod and you represent the only points of strength in the entire thing uh, compared to the rest of the bulk of Big Linda. As you all head towards Market Square, I'm going to have you all roll two d4s. What is this nonsense? <laughs> New things. Oh my goodness! I am downgrading because because of the situation. I am downgrading your d6s to d4s. I got a two and a three. Four and a, a three, two. and I got three and a one. Three and a one. Okay. Pluto. Pluto. You were a point of strength on that wagon. <laughs> it's, it's, As you it's haul heavy. just about a block away from as you see the marketplace, the wagon completely buckles and collapses and just shatters. No. <laughs> Go back and get my immovable rod. <laughs> Curse, Curse these awful things. Pluto, Pluto, rule number 98, no matter the situation, you, never stupid. lose your cool. I'm kicking the cart, just chunks of it kicking off into Pluto, the- Pluto, Pluto, save it for the horse, okay? Stupid. What save horse? it for the horse. Oh, I have plenty more for We that. could use a horse. a horse. What horse? Oh, no, it's the dead horse, but the one you kick coming to Drakenheim for good luck. Veo, you- we can't use a dead horse to pull a broken cart. No, no, but you, you, he's gonna save his kicking for the horse. You kicked the horse the, before, right? The, the cart is completely beyond repair. Like I smash the rest of it. Ba basically, what happens is the other wheels give out, and the head of Big Linda just pulverizes the re remains uh, uh, of it. Yeah, and like Vale, you have to like kind of like squeeze under and through Big Linda's jaws to like reach out Ooh. the immovable rod. In fact, as you do, give me a dexterity saving throw. Ooh. Fifteen. There's like a weird amount of movement happening from that tongue, but it's probably nothing. <laughs> I it probably nothing? Give it an extra I, wax. I it. take out my rapier and I just slowly <laughs> poke it into... <laughs> yeah, just like... <laughs> it still seems dead. But good. All okay, right. So as you pull your rapier idea. out and look back, you actually can't see the hole where you stabbed the rapier in. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say stop it. At last. <laughs> uh, to the head, to the seven yeah. head. Stop it. Stop, stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> I'm going to use the shield of saint vitruvio for its one true purpose i place it under big linda's head and i begin to make a toboggan of sorts oh big linda's I... head is way too big to use a shield darn. as a toboggan darn it um <laughs> pluto only thing it was useful for it. We're, we're about a block away from market square right yeah yeah you can see the ruins of the marketplace you we... can see the clock tower from here let me Pluto, go scout ahead. 
I was going to, yeah, I was going to say if you and I went, or would you rather I stay behind with the cart? Mm, let me do a There's quick, no cart. quick There's look-see, no. and, uh, and then we can go get the cart if I see it. All right. Very well. Lord Commander, your mission is to find us a new cart. I'm already gone. <laughs> Where did she go? I was literally <laughs> just talking to yeah, her. Yeah, and... she does that. Wow. Fast. Okay. So, Veo, you scoot away to scout out Market Square. How are you going to approach that? Um, good question. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to go across the tops of the the outer kind of buildings. Okay. And kind of see if I can see anything from the ground. All right. Um... And are you trying to remain hidden? Are you trying to go out? Like, yeah. okay. Stealthy. Okay, stealthy. so so you're going to approach it, it from a stealthy perspective. Okay. Yeah. All right. So first of all, so you, you clamber up onto the townhouses that overlook the market square. And of course, as you, as you know, there's two massive open air plazas that make up the market square of Drakenheim. So there's a set of building of tall stately buildings that form the main guild houses and banks and vaults of Drakenheim. And then that's at the center of the market square. And then on the other side of it is where the clock, the cosmological clock tower is. And then through both the plazas are just a sprawl of stalls. Um, and the Market Square has been one of the biggest battlegrounds in Drakenheim since the since the 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 city fell. Um, more hooded land up until the battles of Temple Gate and the battles for the cathedral. Probably more hooded lanterns have lost their lives here, and more adventurers have have lost their lives here than anywhere else. Today, um, to determine the tenor of things, Vale, I'm going to have you roll me. A d6. Five. Okay. At the first market, the 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 first market plaza is deserted. Um, looking out from your perch, uh, uh one of uh, the balcony of a townhouse, you look out uh, across the market square and you see all manner of market of the the ruins of many market stalls, and one of the things that you immediately look out at over over this whole thing give me a perception check 17 scanning it one of the things that you can actually tell is there look like several places where carts might have once been parked over the market square but it turns out that a cart is actually kind of a valuable thing in an abandoned city there's many reasons why an a group of adventurers either to to get the wounded out or to get things things out. So looking around, you're actually like, oh yeah, like I remember years ago there was a cart there, but it's gone now because someone else took it, right? So you you see a whole bunch of uh, different spots, and looking out now, from a visual scan. There are several pallets that are covered over with canvas. It's possible that amongst these pallets, like stacked behind the, the crates and barrels that are there, there could be another cart. But from your vantage point, you'd actually probably have to go down and see and start looking around, at least with the scan that you've made. There might be something there, but nothing immediately catches your eye. There's a there's a couple potential things, but you need to get closer to actually investigate to determine if it was a usable cart. Okay. And before if I I'm gonna get closer. Yeah. And this I is do this a is just, scout. This is just the the west plaza. So you could still check the east plaza where the clock tower is as well. Hmm. I think I'll check down here first. And okay. Then, but a quick scan to see if there's any movement or take a whiff of the air okay so as you head down into the area itself give me an investigation check 17 17 okay you're looking around for a cart 
um, and you come upon uh, several old stalls. And the area that you are in now is one where the there would have been a lot of fresh produce, which means farmer's wagons. However, the, the first thing that you find is a hand cart. So this is like a cart that would have been big enough for one person to pull, to bring like cabbages, not big enough for, for the, the, the head. Roll me a d6. Four. Okay. But the search is promising. Would you like to keep looking? A little bit more, yeah. Okay. Give me another investigation check. Ooh, ooh. Uh, 30! 30. 30. Okay. And roll me a d6, please. Oh my. Three. Okay. You start looking around. Piled up with several boxes thick crates are stacked on it they're closed there's netting awning over them but it is a massive wagon one that probably would have been used to haul uh, well judging by what's on it the the wagon has several crates of goods that haven't been opened up um and the the whatever's in them you'd have to actually probably open them up and see but the wagon is held up with this massive amount of crates on top of it it's parked it's in position it doesn't look damaged but it is full of whatever whatever cargo it used to have you again you need to crack it open to see what that cargo actually is hmm. i think i'll take my info and head back to the group okay you head back. Sebastian, Paluto, Ophelia. Wilhelm. <sighs> wow. Wilhelm, Paluto, the head, Ophelia, and Elias are still there waiting for you. So I says to him, I says So like and, and you said like you can't make an ore? Like I just guys, don't understand. That seems like a simple the, it's it's a simple guys. request, right? Oh, Vale, you're back. Damn. Guys, I found it. I found it. I found it. One problem. It's got a lot of stuff in it. It might be a bit noisy to take it out, and I have no idea what's in it. But I found it. That's great. Well done. We should go get it. Pluto. Yeah. Do you enjoy carrying heavy things? <laughs> I carry you both through every battle, so... Uh, uh wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I not where I killed I was... just as many rattlings as you did last I, time. Pluto. I, I two rattlings. I'm, Pluto, how many did I'm you kill? Like Josh three? and yeah, I love carrying things, and especially for my good friends. All how right. can I help? I think I've got a plan. We don't know if it's going to draw attention. Veo, I think that you're probably best on the rooftops. So, if you watch from the rooftops in case of movement in the area, I how will. Are you going to know where it is? I mean, you show us where it is and then get onto the rooftops. Oh. Pluto takes things out of the back. Sh and I will e either help Pluto or also be around to watch. Which which do you think is better? What about Ophelia and the head? They'll come with us. They can also help unload the cart because or hide nearby. What about the head? Uh, can you keep an eye on the head, uh, uh, Bayo, and yell pork chops just in case mm. something comes? All right, Veo watches the head. I watch you from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. You unload the cart. It's manual labor. Got it. <laughs> um, Love it. Even though Paluto is strong, the, the crates on this cart are large enough that it might require two people to actually lift them up. Would it be against the rules for... Ophelia Reed or uh, Elias Drexel to help. Mm. Would this be a? Uh, would this be a? Ophelia Reed speaks up. We, we probably shouldn't, to be honest. 
Is it against the rules for you to yell if there's danger? <laughs> no. Then uh, All right. that's your Elias. even promoted. <laughs> Elias, Ophelia, you're on watch duty. Veo, you stay with the head. Myself and Pluto will unload the cart. I actually, I- I'm thinking um, I kind of want Veo on this one. To you unload can, you, the cart? Yeah. All right, fine. I mean, I have to show you where the cart is, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll watch the head. Yeah. <laughs> They'll watch you guys. Mm-hmm. You two unload the cart. Are we all happy with our assignments? As we head off, um, <laughs> they all, like, look at, like, look at his arms. Like, they're kind of tiny. Like, you know, like, I, I don't want As my guy. tiny <laughs> arms come up, too, and I'm like, I mean, one tiny arm or another. You know, I've never met a cat as strong as you. You've got some, uh, I just, you know, I just feel like he's going to go, like, my, my leash my just can't carry that big of a cart, but like you know. So, meanwhile, so Wilhelm's standing by the cart, and he's like, "Why would they leave me?" But and he goes to like pick up one of the wheels, and like, Ugh! and like drops it. He's like, "Why would they leave me behind?" I. Uh. All right. As you get up to the cart, Paluto, examining the 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 crates. These are large wooden crates that have rope handles on them. And there's visibly some hay inside them. And just kind of prying inside, these are boxes of bottles of Caspian wine. (laughs) This is another reason why we couldn't bring... uh... (laughs) Should we keep some? We, We have to give some to Sebastian. Um, he's a, an officiato, a wine right. So, you, so as you can imagine, the 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 crates that are on here, they're they're kind of these longer crates that two people would carry with like a rope handle on either side, and then if you open them up inside, there's kind of the wooden dividers separating the bottles of wine with the hay packed in to stop the the wine bottles from breaking. We could probably get away with like. Dumping most of it and then keeping one or two crates. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to start just kind of like pretty crudely throwing off as getting off the crates as hard as I can, like getting down and like pulling it off and then like Veo can grab the other end and we can lower it It down. It becomes very obvious that normally this would be a job that four people would undertake because you'd want two people on the wagon and two people on the ground to to make sure that the wine bottles don't slide. So as you're sliding the the, sure the mob, we... like like you hear like the 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 clink clink crash. Uh, There's like leaking coming yeah, out of one of the bottoms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is going to draw some uh smelling creatures. Okay. You can all roll me a d6. Oh no. I'm sticking See, with the I new dice. I just rolled it 5. I'm stick with the new dice. 3 4 takes a good amount of time I, I would say it probably takes the better part of an hour but you uh, un- but you unload the wagon at the end I've got noodle arms I'm just like Row. I've been poking Big Linda's head with my rapier <laughs> thank you thank you at one point Love you it. think it either there's like a release of gas but it sounds like a low growl <laughs> ah 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 aha and I keep poking it okay The the wagon, um, there is, there def- this was definitely a wagon that would have once been pulled by an ox, um, possibly two oxen. Um, and so, uh, there, there's the remains of the, the bit and the burdle that would have gone across them. So the, the, the kind of the yoke that holds the oxen is still there and so a a yoke is kind of like one of those bracket shaped things that has a bit of padding underneath it that it would have clamped down over the backs of the two of the animals so you can kind of pick the yoke up and push the wagon forward like pushing a bar bar forward and so i'm going to begin that journey and i'll do my best to uh 
uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting while maybe Veo can kind push of like help back. steer or yeah, okay. poor push. Okay. The best you can. You haul the wagon back towards Wilhelm and begin putting the head on top of it. It's going to take all of us. <laughs> Noodle arms. <laughs> oh, oh, its mouth is slipping over top of Pluto again. No. It's a bit of drool drops down on your nose um, as you load it in. Okay, the cart's loaded up. That was quite the diversion. Are we going to pull this thing all the way back? Um, I see a minute. We're in a pickle. <laughs> I really could use. Yeah, it's been pretty exhausting, Pluto. In fact, why don't you give me a constitution saving throw? Oh, no. I, uh, I get a 24. OK, you do not gain a level of exhaustion. I needed that. Uh, I've, just give me let me just catch my breath, but I think I'll be OK. Feels good, you know. It's a lot of you know. It's good to just get a good workout. And it's been a while since I've had a good workout. Doing a lot of like killing, but not a lot of lifting. You know, <laughs> it's not the same. Just swinging axes and arm day. Gotta work yeah, on your leg yeah. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear that leg day is very important. Uh, don't skip it, or else you end up with chicken legs. <laughs> how do you how do you think I'm able to carry this? Massive physique on top. You gotta have a. Oh, so you're face. going to carry the cart? Oh, I believe I'm the only one capable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, earlier you pulled an axe beak out of a bag. Can you do that again? I, uh, I'm that bag of trips. That bag of tricks is dry. It's uh, How magic is confusing. I don't understand. Look, look. I honestly, it's so weird. I look in it and it's empty. But tomorrow, it'll just magically be full again. I don't when understand. you look in it, is it full of axe beaks? Or is it, what, what does it look like in there? It's like these fuzzy little balls that um, just exist. And when you throw them, uh, then it just magically turns into an assortment of creatures. I've hmm. pretty much explored the whole gamut. Um, so I I'm have sorry. an idea of what it comes. But they've, they've come in handy. I have a question. Yeah. Is the clock tower in the haze? Yes, it is in the haze, but not the deep haze. So we're in Market Square. Could we? The the tower is right there. What what? Is there animals at the tower, or what's what are you thinking there? I'm thinking, could we rest and get that bag back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could camp out at the clock tower overnight if you wanted to. Oh. I guess the option is camp out in the clock tower, get the. Uh, get the head inside at least somewhere safe or make it for the barracks and the gate we do have hooded lanterns stationed at the tower i believe uh we secured that location um so we should be safe there and we do have five days to complete this so i'm more thinking pluto do you want to do you want to carry it back or do you want your animals to do it for you we could use some help um, although, uh, I'm willing to go either way. It's whatever you decide. I, I do worry that if we are ambushed again, hmm. um, I may not, I, I am running, uh, I've got some delirium stuck in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna get it out later uh, when we when we take a break. Uh, just the I'm, bits of a uh, bits of javelin from those nasty. Uh, uh, I'm lines. gonna go ahead and make an executive decision that we take a rest at the clock tower, as we have uh, some patrols there uh, that can safeguard our prize, and Pluto will get an apothecary to tend to you immediately uh, to remove that delirium. That would be um, fantastic. It's just like the tip. It's like a sliver, you know? It's like a... Mm. I have seen what a sliver can do in Tearhaven. I assure you we want that sliver removed as soon as possible. Fair. Okay, so you want to make for the clock tower to camp out there and um, 
and make your and then recuperate and return correct yeah okay uh there are hooded lanterns stationed at the clock tower yes that they do use it as a, as, as a patrol, patrol point yes yes because that location has been secured for some time right yeah okay All right. as you head back across market square you can each roll me one more d6 I got a six. You got a six? I got a six. I got a five. Okay. Fortune is on your side. For as you return to the clock tower, indeed, a patrol of hooded lanterns are there. They recognize their lord commander and their king. um, And they admit you. And you, you are able to wheel the cart up to the the front doors of the the clock tower and take a take a long rest there for sure yeah can we get pluto jackson's uh, wounds tended to to make sure that he is not being contaminated by delirium uh the well there are hooded lanterns stationed here there is not an apothecary or a healer there that is the the um the apothecaries are stationed at the gate and stationed Mm. at the barracks themselves so Pluto, you have one contamination level? Uh, no, it was it, more flavor. I was just thinking of javelins hitting me. Okay. And uh, you but... all did take Aqua Expergo, though, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and did you all use your saving throws from Aqua Expergo as well? Did you I make... used at least. I used. I haven't used two. any. I used two, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, two of my three. So. Basically, um, when the Aqua Expergo wears off, you're safely at the clock tower, but then that's when all the bile comes up. <laughs> I want a bath. I call I call Sebastian Crow's bath time. <laughs> yeah, there's really not a bath at the clock tower. There's of the any- bucket. There's, there's the bucket. There's a barrel <laughs> yeah. that Sebastian <laughs> uses, yeah. <laughs> yep. Maybe we grab some of that uh, Caspian wine. Grab a bottle each and just mm-hmm. sort of relax. Oh, do tonight. we have like a nice long rest where we we spend the night drinking Caspian wine and sharing stories and throwing a bile? Guys, yes. it's been so long. Now, Wilhelm, tradition is when we sleep in the clock tower, we have to sleep with our heads yeah. together, yeah. like a like a. But there's a bed right there. No, on you're on, on the, the floor. bed. Yeah, on the bed. Or all on, three of us the on the bed. Yeah, yeah, face with our heads. With our head. Yeah. This is why would. That's this not how the way we do it work. in Drakenheim. Wilhelm, this is a bonding moment. All right. Do you really want to be an outsider? Uh, no, I, I'm a, I'm for the people, and you the are Jackson my people. Three um, will sleep together with I'm, our heads. I'm touching. sorry, the Jackson Three is yes, that what you that's called what we yourselves? Call ourselves? Yeah, yeah. No, they own the pussycats. No, I don't remember that. I I'm that pretty a... sure we're the Wilhelm Brigade. No. That sounds no, 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 wrong. No. So wrong. Mm. I don't like the ring of that. I <laughs> tried we to make it up. <laughs> well, with that, the night passes. The only thing that you do see spying out from the clock tower are four griffins, one of which bearing two bears two riders limping back across the city walls. It looks like all the all the party all the party of the Illyrians survived. But they've come back empty-handed for tonight. Mm. That looks okay. that's good for us. Well, um, if yeah. been successful on the, the first, it's been a day, right? One day. Yeah. <laughs> on the first day, I mean, who knows what they're gonna think of next? Though we have to be prepared for what we want to. I mean. After. If they're stupid enough to go after that dragon again, they're, they're, I, I'm sure they've learned their lesson. It got the best of them once and almost killed one of their people. Is there anything else in Drakenheim bigger than the bigger Linda? The biggest Linda? Is there an even bigger Linda? <laughs> um, I think that was the as, as the Linda. night As the night passes, um, Elias Drexel says, the only thing that I've heard of that could be even considered larger than this thing would have been that monster that was in the throne room or maybe one of those worms that you fought, Pluto. 
Uh, Elias, the reports were that the creature in the throne room was destroyed. Is that correct? Yes. But since the... If the Illyrians learn their lesson from today, I think that the only chance that they have of finding anything larger than Big Linda is if they brave the crater. That's suicide. I, uh... I don't disagree with you. Well, maybe, maybe, um... It's not necessarily in the interest of a Caspian duel, but I know that our we don't seek necessarily the glory of the win as much as the peace that it brings. And there might be a chance that we can appeal to their saner side. Um, you know, Uriel going into the crater it took everything that we had from the academy just to survive sebastian crow was almost lost his mind touching the the delirium heart the it's 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 madness down there i, I mean if they attempt to go there i don't think their griffins would even be able to accommodate and who knows what if they run mm. into the falling fire we um, have that special armor to even survive in there and and the spells that were uh, available from the academy which i do not think that the um the paladins would have access to i think we need to send a signal to uriel radley and have a chat with him before he dares enter that crater and try to talk to him reasonably not I don't want to talk him out of participating in the duel. That's unsportsmanlike. That's not what we're here to do. But he needs to understand that it's not worth his life or the life of his people to... But does he even know that the worm is there? I mean, we fought it. We know. But that was... Yeah, that was... Stories do get around. I had even heard of the great... Pluto Jackson facing the worm of the crater. Uh, I've heard mixed stories. One of them was that you were a valiant hero in that battle. Another is that you got changed into a spider-like creature with a maw in your belly and were running around like a lunatic and nearly lost yourself and basically just fumbled around like an idiot. But looking at you now, I see no belly maw or spider limbs, so I assume those were all just radical theories. Both can be the truth. Both can. (laughs) Ophelia reads that says, I wouldn't underestimate uh Uriel Radley, though. And I wouldn't underestimate Sir Mallory nor Flamekeeper Sheila. They're both some of the greatest champions of the Sacred Flame. Their hearts are pure and their spirits are girded well against all these threats. If there's anyone in the Silver Order that could withstand it, it would be the three of them. And it's not like we haven't been doing our own homework over in the Silver Order or in Illyria. We might have a few of our own prayers that we might that might guard us against the night. After all, the Academy has been messing around with all their experiments, but the flame provides us with its own blessings. Uh, Philia, you're right. I think that uh, we should probably just focus on our tasks. We should focus on what we're out here to do let them do what they got to do and we if if because if we want to win this thing we got to bring home the big prize and big lind is now our our baseline <sighs> maybe there's something else that we can go after that's a little bit more well i mean we did run into those demons in the castle i mean i know they're not as big as linda but the quantity plus quality yeah also you know you can appreciate for the judging uh, mm. You know, a demon, a demon uh, could could fetch a fair price. Ophelia, rule number three is never underestimate your foe, and as long as Uriel Radley goes in there prepared, I'm sure he will have what it takes to stand up to whatever's in the crater. I just 
don't want to lose anybody over mm. a silly duel. I must say, of all the people I know, the righteousness that burns in Yuri Radley's heart is uncorruptible. I've seen the man shatter a delirium crystal with his bare hands. You're not seems, exaggerating. Seems dangerous. No, I'm not. It might be, and I'll I'll say I'm surprised that they didn't have any luck up there at the castle. I think that probably for them they just weren't a little underprepared. I wouldn't put it past them to go back and try again now that they know what they're facing. Don't be perturbed. Uriel Radley is no stranger to failure. He's been defeated a few times, but he's always come back that much stronger. He pays attention. He learns from his mistakes. That's something that some of your friends haven't taken to too wisely. I literally have rules about that. It seems like basic knowledge. Learn, learn from your mistakes. Hmm. I also think, isn't that why we're here in this mess to begin with? Because we learned from our mistakes? Because we're willing to change? I hope so. Well, with well, that, anything else you'd like to do before you settle down for the night? I just like, I massage the place where I'm sleeping. I go, okay, good night. I hope right. you like noise while you sleep. I fall asleep instantly. <laughs> White, White noise does it for me. Well, with the, with that, in the morning, you're able to load up the wagon and set out once again with a newly summoned axe beak. Uh, what's the name for this one now? Um, let me consult the Rolodex uh, provided by um, a... <coughs> uh, we're going to go with uh, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, big shout out to Kyle for the... Uh, <laughs> The, the 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 names. I think he was quite proud of that one. It has the coldest, deadest stare you've ever seen. It's like a robot. <laughs> I don't think this one likes me very much. You think it's really watching you too, and like not in a good way. Like really, really watching you. You're dancing into my soul. Fits right did into that, the did that is axe he, speak is he tracking just, me? Is he tracking me right now? That axe speak just offered me a sword that I've been thinking about for the past three days. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I, I only said it out loud once. He's like... Listening to our conversations. <laughs> at, the, at, at this point, um, the uh, the the. Hooded lanterns, uh, as you pack up, and they, they say, um, one, one of the, 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 the Captain, uh, Jacob, uh, says, safe, uh, safe travels, uh, from what I understand, the, uh, the Lord Commander scheduled some extra patrols of the route between the barracks and the, uh, the clock tower. Fortunate that, hmm? He, he hmm. winking several times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good on, good on. Okay, um, we're gonna go that route. <laughs> and as you uh, as you take as you wake up in the morning, you notice that there are uh, immediately crossing the market square. There's a little bit of debris that was here yesterday that isn't here anymore. And the evident and there's several hooded lanterns on the rooftops that are just like. <laughs> Lord Commander, I, uh, Your Majesty. <laughs> I love this place. You all get an extra snack. Yeah. So, nevertheless, each of you can roll a d6. Mm. Oh, two. Two. One. <laughs> Thanks, Hooded Lanterns. What could go wrong? Okay. As you pass by the various patrols, you pass by the ga the garrison and through Shepherd's Gate out into the 
city, the outer city. And you're heading down Market Row, and the Hooded Lantern, and um, as you pass through uh, um, Mar- uh, Shepherd's Gate, some of the Hooded Lanterns say, <laughs> and they, they kind of laugh, Clear road from here! <laughs> Don't you worry about anything. Ah, Thank what's there you. to worry about? It should be berries from here. Mm. And um, as you head down Market Way towards the outer limits, the outer outskirts of Drakenheim, not far from the dead horse of Drakenheim, you see, walking towards you, heading into the city, are three adventurers. The three of them are all clad in heavy overcoats and thick hoods, scarves, and goggles. Like they are the most paranoid about delirium contamination that you have ever seen in anybody. They walk forward and and you see these, these three adventurers as you come forward. Um, and quite notably, none of them are carrying weapons. Hail, travelers. One of them stops. And from beneath its heavy scarf that covers its fa- their, their face... And the thick goggles, you you can't even make out any features of of this person, whether they're a man or a woman or any or or, or, or what what background they might be, what origin they might be. So thick, so heavily dre- dressed are they? They seem to have thick. The although beneath their overcoats, it looks like they might be wearing plate boots and plate gauntlets. And the group of them, the, one of them says, Hail, your majesty. Good hunting. Yes? In a strangely androgynous voice. Um... Uh, be be careful in there. Um, this is just a sample of what we what what we're dealing with. I reference uh, <laughs> Big Linda's uh, head. The 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 leader says, "This is most impressive, Your Majesty." It is an honor to meet you, and uh, puts his ha- and it puts its hand out. I'm going to attempt to use the panache ability here, okay. and I'm going to hop off the cart. I'm going to shake this person's hand and start very kindly, just like it's really nice to see other people heading into Drakenheim for their own adventures. I do hope that you have good luck in there. It's a dangerous place, but the three of you look quite capable. And I, I'm going to... I, so my attempt is to charm them so that I can actually talk them into removing their masks or their face gear. Certainly. Um, as you walk up to begin speaking to the, the one that's offered uh, its ha- their hand to you, all three of you can roll me an insight check. Thirteen. Also a thirteen. Uh, fourteen. Okay. Wilhelm, as you take the 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 adventurer's hand, all of a sudden, 
you hear as as the as their hand, as your hand clasps in theirs you hear a whirring noise that sounds like it's charged with energy and quite suddenly the grip tightens around your hand ah. and as it does so the other arm of the creature splits open revealing a repeater crossbow the arm is of the creature is ending in a massive repeater crossbow and all of a sudden it unloads its full clip directly into your stomach you are surprised roll for initiative um oh. we are not surprised because i have a crossbow of warning okay then you are ah. not surprised oh, oh. Lucky. you feel just as you feel the pulse <laughs> You you sense my it's all instinct. Wrong. Yeah, as soon as yeah. the tight as the grip tightens, my like I, it's like a spider sense moment, and I it's like slows down, and as I see the hand opening, and I'm like I'm reacting to it. Okay. Well, well. Okay. In that case, we can roll for initiative. Ooh. Nice, oh. Wilhelm. I got a twenty-two on initiative. 27. <laughs> I rolled a crit on my initiative. So, like, excited about a 15. Like, I'm over here with my 15 being like, well, at least I'm not going really last. But I probably am. Okay. I'm guessing my panache didn't work. Uh, no, because you wouldn't have had enough time to actually start that. Because it takes, like, a minute, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so initiative? Still, still not able to use that ability. Uh, 27. 27 for Veo. 22 for Wilhelm. Okay. Um, and I... Okay. Uh, so... Tw one... Uh, so my assassins actually beat you, uh, Wil Wilhelm. What? And v Veo? Veo got 27. Okay. And Pluto? 15. Okay. All right, so let's pull this over here. Yeah, can can I ask then, from the time that we were interacting with them, has a minute passed? Or was it just a very quick interaction and then grabbed, grabbed Um, uh... It was less than a minute. Okay. But if you want to do your analysis, um, yeah, I'll give it to you. What do you want to know? I want to know... AC, is it greater or less superior, equal, or inferior to 20? Um, in the case of these creatures, it is equal to. And um, let's go with current hit points. Uh, inferior, equal, or superior than 121 superior okay whoa <laughs> hello i'll just do our little so that for uh, that's the know your enemy uh feature i can compare other creatures to myself um as long as I spend about a minute interacting with them outside of combat. Okay. That will be uh, appropriate then. Um, okay. So, Veo, as you see this happening, so I'm going to consider with what's, what's happened, Wilhelm is currently restrained. Oh, no. Effectively. Okay. So, so Veo, um, it is, um, so we will just bring it up into the combat view here. And so, Veo, it is your turn. So, um, I'm gonna start side because I can hit the guy behind Wilhelm, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, I just immediately start shooting him. Okay. Um, I imagine that, like, I sense Veo behind me, and I, uh, my instincts, I dodge out of the way to make an opening. The right way. The right way. 
Not uh, into her shots. Yeah. 18 to hit. Uh, that is a miss. Okay. Um, the arrow, def- there, there's a clear tink as it bounces off of whatever armor is w- being worn over the overcoat. Then I am going to um, bonus action, use my Zephyr Strike um, just to get advantage on it. Second one. Oh, that's good. Um, 25 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. That's going to be an extra. Extra. And then I can use my. Um, Deek. Here we go. Deek. 20. 31, 38, uh, 43 damage. All right. Nice. Wow. Um, As the arrow uh, crashes out, you uh, um, crashes into the the creature. It, it stumbles back, but is still holding on to Wilhelm. I get one more because it's my first. The Dread Ambusher. Nice. Uh, oh, no, that's going to miss. So, yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Veo. Um, Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, and then I want to step in front just of, like, Ophelia Reed and just, like, kind of try to block her a little bit. Okay. <laughs> like, ah, stance. The whirring continues from all three of these beings as they kick into action. Um and begin uh, their their assault. Um, as they as they do so, uh, so Wilhelm, uh, the one that has you grabbed, is going to start uh, stabbing you um, with well, basically unloading the clip of its repeater crossbow right into you. Yeah. Uh, the first shot is a crit, uh, and the second shot uh, actually is going to probably miss. Uh, that one's only a fourteen. That misses. As the weapon unloads, you see all the bolts are tipped with delirium. Oh, I was hoping for poison. Um, you from the critical hit, you take twenty-six piercing damage. Uh, I'm gonna half that. Plus, plus from the crit, a total of thirty-eight necrotic damage, and give me a Constitution saving throw. I can't half the necrotic as well. I can only half the. Is it combined damage? It is, it is combined, so I can say you, you could have the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, give... 26 and 38, so 64. Yeah. So 32. Half, okay, yeah. that's manageable. Uh, yeah, that's only half my hit points. <laughs> and give me a constitution saving throw. Yes, I love it. Let's go with a three. Uh, you you have, g- you're, you're super lucky sometimes. And uh let's go really with a come out ahead let's go with an 11. you gain one level of contamination oh, no. roll a d6 for mutations uh i'm guessing my aqua expergo wore a huff yeah, yeah. we we yeah. dealt we with that last rest. night cool um got a five on my mutation roll so we're okay okay so you do not mutate okay is the rule is you have to roll under your level of contamination yeah. correct equal mm-hmm. to or under okay okay yep uh, so that is a level of contamination. Uh, love it. Thank you, sir. You are more than welcome. My uh, very m- much appreciated. Okay. That's one of them, right? What are the other two up to? Are the they, other uh... two? The the other two begin. Um, first of all, as they begin aiming their weapons at you, Wilhelm. Mm-hmm. You see, this is an assassination. They're, they're, because their arms open up, also revealing the delirium tip repeater crossbows. But as they do so, a beam of solid light stretches from their eye towards your forehead. And you can see there's a, almost like a crosshair forming in Uh-oh. their eyes. Um, here is the effect they're going to start shooting you. But if you do not move more than 10 feet on your next turn, 
all their attacks next turn will hit you automatically. Cool. Love it. Great. And I'm restrained right now? Currently, yes. Love it. This uh, is superb. So the first one fires its two shots. Uh, I get a 17 and a 13 to hit. I position myself so <laughs> the other guys in between me and them. How do you feel right now? <laughs> um, I, get, I get a 21 with the other one and a... Um, and a 27 with the, the yeah other so one. the problem with positioning me and the one and the guy that it's holding me in between the one is that i open myself up clearly to the other uh so both of those attacks hit so that one uh the those two so each attack is going to be seven piercing damage and then another 10 necrotic damage um and i need two constitution saving throws versus contamination Uh, how about a 12? Okay, that's a failed saving throw. I will use lucky. Unlucky. And turn it into a 5. Okay. Um, just I'll Our roll King mutation. is becoming a monster. I get a 1 on my mutation roll, so okay. there's... Okay, so you do mutate. <laughs> so you do, so that's two levels of contamination so far. Yeah, come on, something that makes you not restrained. That would be pretty wicked. Right yeah, now. that would like, be it makes you slime arms. Uh, slime arms. <laughs> All right, roll a d twenty. Let's see what you mutate. I got a three. Um, your fingernails, teeth, and toenails start falling out. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> My gold tooth falls out. No. <laughs> All right, that's their turn. With that, oh, well, I still have another save. Oh yeah, okay. Oh no. How 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 about a fifteen? Do you accept that is a, a save? That is a save. Yes. Thank you, yes. thank well, you. Um, yeah. Oh, why would I have to get the toenail? Like, why couldn't I teleport or <laughs> turn into goo? Of everything. Your toenails fall off again. They just finished growing back too. They're like finally there. <laughs> cool. Well, with yeah, that, so cool. <clears throat> um, we are over to you, Wilhelm. Okay. Is there any way that I can use acrobatics to get out of this? Can I, like, try to, like, leverage? I kick my feet against the thing's chest and try to, like, somersault out okay, of his grip. With, yeah, that would simply be making, yeah, you're trying to break out of the grapple. So you just have to yeah. make, you use acrobatics against the escape DC. Okay. Yeah. Do you accept a 23? Yes, you manage to kind of buckle around and slide out of the grip of the, of the creature, slipping slipping free. That's going to be your action to break the grapple. I will then cunning action disengage. Okay. And dive behind the cart. <laughs> okay. And, and, and look up at Elias and go, I'm dying. Uh, and that breaks the target lock. Um, so they will not be hitting you automatically on their next turn. I'll feel so good. All right. Oh. Pluto, it is your turn. Amir, you and uh, I I unleash Ignatius um, as I scream its name um, for the king. And I, uh, I charge the uh, two assassin robots okay. um i crit <laughs> okay yes! nice so uh uh 24. so i'm attacking the one that was grabbing him mm -hmm. um Um, 81 damage. <laughs> okay. It explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I charge it. Um, as you cleave into it, you see for a brief moment, the innards of the construct and the delirium heart inside it. And you just hear this tick, 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 boom. I can't be good. <laughs> Um, give me a dexterity saving throw. My favorite. 
Um, ooh, I'm gonna use lucky. <laughs> See if or I actually, sorry, it's a con save. Sorry, it's a con save. I forget, this, um, this is a delirium bomb. <laughs> so then the first thing I'm gonna ask then is, does a 13 save? No. Then I'm going to use indomitable um, to turn that into a 26. Okay, that is a successful save. Uh, but that is still going to be uh, half damage. Okay. So uh, it's half of 45, so you take 22 uh, psychic damage. Um, and all that remains of the machine is a smoldering husk. Like, there's, there's just splintered bits left after it explodes. Does it affect the other assassin? That's a great question. It does not appear to. Well, drats. <laughs> um, but it does cause an arcane anomaly, so who wants to roll that? Uh, Veo yeah. does. Veo does. Okay. What do, what do I roll? Roll a I'm d20. So excited. 13. 13. Tendrils of life flow from the nearest creature to others. Uh, so, Paluto, you have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw, or you take 8d8 necrotic damage, half on a success. The three nearest creatures within 60 feet each regain hit points equal to the damage taken. So, saving throw number two. <laughs> That's Veo and the two assassins. Sorry! Um, I don't need any hit points. What was the DC? I got a 15. 15, so it's successful, so it's half damage. Oh, God. So you still take sixteen necrotic uh, necrotic damage, and um, and then the two creature the the two constructs regain hit points, and Veo regains hit points. I don't have. I'm, I don't need. Can I? Re no. <laughs> if only you didn't dive so far. All right. What else are you gonna do, Pluto? I. Okay. So. I had life sucked out of me by thinking I have like that cartoon explosion black. Yeah like yeah. being all over my face and I turn and I go you and I, <laughs> and I swing um, and I get a 23 to hit uh, that is a hit for uh, 28 damage okay and uh, I swing again for a 24 to hit or uh Uh, 26 damage. Okay. And then that was my third attack. I action surge. Okay. Um, I continue my assault. Um, I get a, a 22 to hit. All right. Uh, for, oh yeah. 30 damage. Oh, you, as you, as Ignatius crashes down on this creature, par parts of the disguise it's wearing, fire away showing the 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 iron um body with a strange almost skull like face uh as you bash away the goggles of the creature and the and the scarf it kind of has this this sunken skull like face that is m made of kind of this marbly porcelain material and it is a const a spindly construct like body with plated features to it who sent you um I'm going to use uh, a luck point to turn a two into a 26. Okay. Just gonna mark it down. Um, to continue my assault. Who sent you? Oh. Uh, 19 damage. Okay. <laughs> and my final attack. Um, I. I think I got rid of my maneuver. Actually, okay, so the thing is attached to its arm, right? Yeah, the, the weapon is part of its body. Yeah. Um, Maybe disarming strike is literal. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth exploring. So uh, my last attack is uh, unfortunately uh, a miss. Okay. Um, and I and I base myself with the creature, um, the evil assassin. 
Uh, the, continuing my interrogation with Ignatius. The battered machine uh, stumbles, uh, but it still stands. It is bloodied as best as best these things can be. <laughs> um, Partially disassembled. Veo, it is your turn. Okay, I'm going to use steady aim to aim my first attack at this guy against Pluto. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Seventeen. It's a miss. It bounces off its armored plate. Try that again. One more time. Ooh, that's better. Um, twenty-seven to hit. Yeah. That will will go through. Yeah. Sweet. And I can use my snake attack. The snake. That's it. Sneak. Surprise. Um, 39 damage. It explodes. Pluto. Another I'm sorry, Pluto. <laughs> Give me another con save, buddy. Uh-oh. Um, I get a 24. Okay, that is successful, but you still do take 22 damage. And uh, roll me another Arcane Anomaly. Uh, Veo? You, you were so good last time. You want to keep it uh, keep it going? One. Uh, oh my god. You rolled a one? Yeah. Gravity breaks in a 100 foot <laughs> radius for one hour. <laughs> oh my god, no. I don't know how to fly. <laughs> I just start floating. Uh, creatures float in midair and must move by pushing or pulling against a fixed object or surface within reach. <laughs> such as a wall or ceiling which allows them to move as if they were climbing unattended objects float around randomly <laughs> there's a floating severed t-rex big head giant big <laughs> linda head <laughs> yeah yeah and a floating wagon <laughs> so remember you're it's it's not that everybody can fly it's that gravity just is broken <laughs> right so you have to think about this as Imagine astronauts on the International Space Station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not near anything. I'm just floating. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. 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 So it's dead, though. It's That's dead. the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's one left, and we're two, all two floating. assassin robots down. Let's count our wins. Okay. We don't need gravity. <laughs> all right. Well, the assassin, uh, um, a small jet starts coming out of the creature's oh, boots. Oh, come on. <laughs> what? As it flies around and starts Thanks. shooting Wilhelm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Uh, getting two hits. Uh, I think that's a 21 and a 21 to hit. <laughs> I cast shield. I can't. I don't have that ability. I'm, I'm getting well, hit. Um, yeah. No. Okay, Wilhelm. Uh, that is going to be uh, the regular piercing damage is only going to be ten points, but the uh, delirium damage is going to be uh, uh, ten points from the first shot, and another ten points from the second shot. I mean, I have three hit points, so. Okay, so it, it, it takes you down. Can yeah. I long live the king? <laughs> okay. Yes, you may long live the king. Okay. What what is what's that? What? Oh, what? veil with the clutch. Oh, that's a thing. No. Yes. Do you remember what does Long Live the King do? Explain. Well, as long as I'm within ten feet of you, which is why I've been measuring just in case. Um, I can use my reaction to re be reduced to zero hit points instead of you. Oh my God, Veil. <laughs> so like, Veil jumps in front of those shots. Yes, and takes the two shots. <laughs> Oh, Veo. Veo. And it is reduced to zero hit points. So Veo, I'm gonna have make you make two saves against contamination. Okay. Uh con? You were at three hit points. Yeah. Correct? So yeah, so the, if you hadn't have intercepted these, that would have been two automatic death saves. And then your turn would have come around, so you would have had a fifty percent chance of dying on your turn. Um, so I rolled, uh, 17. Okay. 
for one, and then a five for another. All right, so you do gain one level of contamination, but you resist the other. But yeah, because if you were at three hit points, the first shot would have reduced Wilhelm to zero, and this creature would have continued shooting at his unconscious body, causing two automatic failed death saves, which would have meant that at the start of Wilhelm's next oh. turn, you would have had to make a d20 roll, and you and your turn is next in the order, which meant that you just avoided... I could have died. Yeah, you just avoided a 50-50 chance, chance of dying by doing that. <laughs> Veil with the clutch. <laughs> and I'm just on the ground. You literally took <laughs> two bullets for me. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> I say as I fall to the ground. <laughs> and Veil, you're actually floating because gravity's broken. So you managed to... I, I imagine that you actually managed to push off against Ophelia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and intercept the bullets. Uh, Wilhelm, it is your turn. Am I close to the ground, or do I have nothing to push off of? Um, you could push off of the cart that Big Linda's in. Alright, um, I'm going to push off of the cart, and I'm going to... Because, like, gravity's broken, so you you can still push off the ground itself. Right? Yeah. It's not that gravity is, is pulling in the opposite direction. It's that there just is no gravity. I'm going to bonus action dash, push okay. myself off of the cart, and catch myself on the well over here. So it is using your climb speed to do that, so that would be halved. Okay. Yeah. So I bump into Pluto. Okay. Hello. And I bump into Pluto, and I'm like, Pluto, intercept that fiend before it kills Veo. You and should drink a potion. I'm going to. Uh, I open my bag and a potion floats out. <laughs> and I grab it out of the air and I'm going to take uh, a potion of greater healing. Okay. And uh, Anything else, Wilhelm? It's my move, my action, and my bonus action. I'm, I'm good. All right, Pluto, it's your turn. Pluto, so, I'm gonna hoist you. Can I can I spin with uh, Wilhelm and kick off him to uh, launch myself at Veo? Uh, yeah, give me an athletics check. Oh, my favorite. So we like intercept and like grab each other and like spin in the air and then you, <laughs> pff, yeah, 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 I love that. I love that. Um, uh, uh, a, a thirteen. Sure. Yeah, you get to Veo. Um, and um, as I reach your, I'm going to reach you here, um, kind of standing over you, and uh, I'm going to dump one of your superior health potions into your uh, All right. mouth. There, that was 40? 40. That was so amazing. <sighs> I need you, but that was, <laughs> you were, you were totally fine. And no, then I just doing that. <laughs> um, you're so brave, and I knew you were the stronger. This is why I chose you for the card thing. <laughs> Thanks, Pluto. Uh, I'm uh, strong apart. I know. I'll I'm protect just you. <laughs> just, just stay back. Okay. And no. can I, can I actually use the rest of my movement to? Can I get base myself with this creature? Sure, sure. I'll allow that. Um, I want to get like. A little bit closer. I want to get as close to this thing as I can. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Veo, it is your turn then. Okay. Um, from this vantage point, I can't shoot it. <laughs> can I shoot it? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. everyone's kind of floaty right now. So there's okay. kind of no such thing as prone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I am going to use, yeah, two, two attacks. First is a, um, uh, 18. Plinks off the armor. And we're going to try again. Uh, 20. And that is a hit. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you're... 
Yeah, you're. I'm. I'm right up on top of it. Thirty-five damage. Nice. Right. And then, um, um, can I cunning action, uh, dash in front of Wilhelm? Is mm-hmm. that like? A, is that enough? That's enough. I pushed off Ophelia. I'm like, <laughs> man, I need to save my king. Save the king. <laughs> I'm I'm still spinning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The assassins. Um, it's going to attempt to move here. And I'm going to go for a sentinel. Okay. Um. I get a 29 to hit. That does hit, so that does stop it uh, where it provokes, so that would be here. 32 damage. Okay. It doesn't kill it, but it is going to use its automated self-destruct and explode itself. So, Veo, Um. you are just in range, and so is Pluto, so both of you can make constitution saving throws. You monster. Oh, oh my. I'm going to use my oh. second indomitable to get a 17. Uh, that's a success. Veo? Eight, eight. eight. Uh, okay, so Veo, you take 45 psychic damage. And Pluto, you take 22 psychic damage. And oh, I collapse. And you again. can roll me another <laughs> arcane anomaly. <laughs> I cl- I'm on the ground. <laughs> Slash um, in the air. Um, can you roll this one, uh, Wilhelm? Uh, it's psychic uh, damage. Sure. Oh, and I guess... Ophelia fails yeah. her saving throw, and so does uh, uh, Elias Drexel, but they have enough hit points. It's psychic damage, uh, so <clears throat> that it won't harm the head of Big Linda. Uh, the arcane anomaly is a 14. Please don't kill me. Uh, a hypnotic pattern appears. It creates a scintillating. It creates scintillating, impossible colors in shapes which are simply wrong. Creatures uh, um, who fail their saving throw are incapacitated by the wrong shape and weep uncontrollably. So oh. I need uh, wisdom saving throws. From I'm everybody? already. I'm yeah. already out. Yeah. I'm already. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Are you down again? I'm dead again. <laughs> yeah. I got a six. Okay, Pluto. <laughs> you crying um, over me? I mean, I have to use lucky. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, to turn that into a 17. You succeed your saving throw. Um, uh, I'm also going to use a luck point, my last one, to get a 12. Okay. Incidentally, Ophelia Reed and Elias Drexel actually both failed their saves. So, Pluto, you're the only one who's not weeping uncontrollably by the pattern, which is simply wrong. Uh, totally and, and, the, and thus, Veo is now bleeding out. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so yeah. look at the shape I'm so, holding for my cast out head. Look at it. <laughs> it like if I failed that, we would be a minute of incapacitated yeah. and Veo would just die. Yeah. The angles are the wrong yeah. degree. It's not even comprehensive. <laughs> Is it a cube? Is it a sphere? What, what's going on? Is, is it an octagon? Is it flat? Is it three dimensional? We don't know. <laughs> Trying to put out of mind the Wilhelm's incomprehensible <laughs> language, just sputtering his his so, crying. So, story behind this this arcane anomaly. This arcane anomaly is actually based on the worst nightmare that I ever had, which was I had a. It was one of the only two times in my life where I have woken up from my sleep in the middle of the night screaming, and it was because of whatever the shape. And and that's all I can say is that it was just a shape that was simply wrong. And I remember waking up screaming. For, and that's why it's in the book. Yeah, because it's the worst nightmare I ever had. That's really cool. <laughs> this, that's really cool. This feels like the worst nightmare some random person I don't even know has ever had. <laughs> it's, it's from your god. <laughs> it feels like a god's nightmare. It feels, it's just, what even color is it? <laughs> Oh God, my brain! I'm gonna wake up screaming and write this down in a book and publish it. Uh, yeah, so Pluto, you are able to potion Veo. I, I launch myself. I catch 
Veo and I administer even just a just like a regular run of the mill potion just to keep no, you stabilized. Take, take, the, take the superior. I guess sure. we can go back. No, can, yeah, I'll superior. I'll give you just something just to even like a greater or a regular just to keep you alive. Whatever the the low end one, just until the gravity <laughs> returns. I was gonna say, could we go back to the the garrison and pick up some <laughs> some healing? Oh my gosh. So, Wilhelm, like, are, what's left of these robots? As the, you know, I assume that we have to leave the area, but you know what I happens when you chunks? destroy a delirium shard? How it breaks into ash and pieces? That's basically all that's left of them, and bits of the clothing <laughs> they were wearing. Like, who? Why did they I try to questions. kill me? <laughs> <laughs> so they killed me. <laughs> they killed Veo twice. They killed you. Were and... they the shape? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Gravity returns to normal after an hour, but you're able to pull the head out, and and, and... but that's where we'll end for the night. <laughs> oh, uh, Pluto! What shape am I? You're. <laughs> You're, I'm you're, man you're, shaped. you're still here. You're still here. I got you, big guy. You're still here. And I, I try to console a, a, a inconsolable weeping Wilhelm by holding him in some kind of burping position. I mean, pat it out of him. Ophelia and Elias are also reacting similarly. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, me and Elias are wrapped up in each other's arms, sobbing <laughs> at the wrongness of the shape. I'm Ophelia and I'm just purring to calm her down. Like, yeah. So uh, it's okay, everyone. It's okay. It's like the longest minute too. It's the yeah. longest minute that we've ever experienced. It's the 60 seconds of just like scream crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Feels like an eternity. As we ride off into the sunset. And your tears, once because again. it's gravity. There's no gravity. Your tears are getting like stuck in your eyes. And they They're don't just... get pulled out properly, so there's like, <laughs> so it's like painful too. Like your eyes oh. are so swollen from the lack of my uh, one gravity. eye. I have one eye, Pluto. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I want to see underneath. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What a great, what a great ending. I'm glad I got to use Long Live the King. <laughs> I that was terrifying, Veo, and you yeah. s you literally saved Wilhelm's life like hard. So that was like uh, a 120 blood. damage uh, arrow. That's what that was. Like, how much damage did you take, Veo? You you went from like full health. I think I went from 80. But either that or I might have been a full health, so 100. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. To nada. Wow. So clutch. Wow. Wait, way to way to pull in all the stops. Good, good, good moves. Good moves all around. Well, a big thank you to the cl amazing clutch play, Jill. Uh, well played, Joe and Kelly uh, tonight. Great, oh, great I game. I don't know if I did much. <laughs> <laughs> and a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his, first of all, everything he does behind the scenes, but also naming our beloved Axe Beaks, uh, oh, both of them tonight. Thank you, Kyle. And a huge thank you to Monty for Ooh. absolutely destroying us tonight um, with rattlings <laughs> and assassin robots and incomprehensible nightmare <laughs> shapes. <laughs> Uh, I killed two ratlings, and that's about all I did this whole game. Mm. And we're thank you, cushion. Monty. Yeah. I'm a very good pincushion. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say, as a pe as a piece of advice to anybody running Dra Dungeons of Dragonheim right now, you know, the next time your party is leaving the city, all you have to do is grab a dozen ratlings and see what happens as they're trying to make their way out of the city, because it even yeah. caused problems for a twelfth level party. <laughs> Yeah, like we really struggled with it. Yeah, uh, so thank you, Monty, for destroying us with one quarter challenge rating creatures. Um, admittedly, some of them were the CR1 uh, gutter snipes, but. Uh, and admittedly, we rolled a lot of ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think we rolled like at least four ones in that encounter. Yeah, that and a lot bad. of misses, too. 
a lot of misses. Yes. Um, well, in our game tonight, we also got a chance to see some incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our live stream games. You can use them at your games too. And we encourage you to go and check out some of these amazing creators and support them. Um, we had some maps by a neutral party. Uh, some of the tokens we used were actually from the official token set. Um, we uh, use uh, our our online um, virtual tabletop is through Roll20. And we have music by Tabletop Audio. So thank you uh, to all and go and check them out and use them in your own games. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Yes, Yes, Yes. You want to get in that Rattlings space? <laughs> yes, Yes, Yes. Uh, check them out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And beyond our cool merch, we also got a cool Kickstarter running right now. Oh, yeah. So check that out at Drakenheim.com. Sebastian's got Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim is currently live for the next couple of weeks. Get in on it. We've unlocked so many stretch goals, added so much to this book, including a new class with six subclasses, the Apothecary, um, a total of 15 subclasses, one for every class uh, in the core rules, and uh, a, an extra one for warlocks, barbarians, barbarians and, and monks. Uh, and as well as a whole bunch of spells. We got the new magic items. You got the stats for the Swords of Caspia and the Seals of Lyria. They're in this one. Uh, so yeah. if, you, if, if you love the world of Drakenheim and want to know all the amazing lore on that too, that's all packed into this amazing book. So check that out, drakenheim.com. It's also live on Kickstarter. And if you want to chat with us about all of the things going on with this new Kickstarter, you can join us on our Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes, which gives you access to our exclusive patron only discord, where we are giving sneak peeks and a lot of fun looks at some of the things going on in this Kickstarter. Um, and also... If you aren't able to join us on Patreon or in our Patreon-only Discord, Monty and I are making a few appearances in the Ghostfire Gaming Discord, where they now have a section on Drakenheim. So we've been answering a few questions here and there and there as well. So if you want the absolute lowdown and all the insider information, you can join our Patreon Discord. Or if you just want to chat with us about the Kickstarter, you can join us on the Ghostfire Gaming um uh, uh discord as well we also have new videos going out on youtube every other tuesday and every thursday so check those out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes and be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast. And this week we are doing a special live stream on Thursday where we will be showcasing the apothecary class. We have three players, myself, uh, Dale, and Ben are uh, Ben from um, um, Eldritch Lorecast and Dale from Monarch Factory, and they are going to be joining us to play apothecaries as well. Three apothecaries walk into a bar. Uh, there's a joke there. I haven't thought of it yet. So watch that on Thursday. That will be 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you next time as we decide the fate of Drakenheim. Good night. <laughs>